What Comey did today was, and I'm just guessing, let's say I'm Aaron Sorkin and I'm doing a, a screenplay and I'm just being fanciful. Imagine this conversation. Well, Loretta, Loretta, you screwed up this way. Now I've got to go out and punt it for you. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to fall on the sword. I'm going to basically turn nothing over to you. I'm going to go out, scold Hillary. Part A of my announcement is going to be this, 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 almost this, this indictment of how you have no judgment. You're sloppy. You're, and you want to be the president? You right. want to handle the three o'clock in the morning call? So I'm going to go out in part A of my announcement. I'm going to just say you're sloppy and you're terrible and you disregard rules and security and the government. Then, then I'm going to do a 180 and say, however, <laughs> however, despite the foregoing, no reasonable prosecutor would do this. Uh, Deutsch notwithstanding, Petraeus notwithstanding, all the whistleblowers, all of the whistleblowers who have been packed away and they're cracking rocks upstate for a host of things. But I'm going to say no reasonable prosecutor, so Loretta, I'm going to get, get you off the hook by basically turning over nothing to you. So Loretta can say, well, you heard it from the FBI themselves. So Loretta is saved. Comey is saved. And also, keep in mind this. And again, remember, my dear friends, as learned as we are, we're still civilians in this Byzantine world of, of Game of Thrones prosecution and that sort of thing. You don't get to be the FBI director by being a rogue. You don't get to right. be a guy who is looking down the road for all oh, things like retirement, Wall Street gigs, board of directors of corporations. You don't, you know, as you look to the sunset of your career and really the big time and the big bucks, and you're a company guy. You don't get to be the, you, you, you don't become the, the FBI director by being a rogue and... I think that's what she meant. I think that's what he meant by a reasonable prosecutor, a corporate guy <laughs> right. who's looking out for his career. Hey, right. if you want to be reasonable about that, let's talk about some of the specifics, Lionel. He sure. said, as he would laid this out, and, and at first I told my wife, I said, look, you look at everything that's happened this last week, and he's holding this now the day after the 4th of July uh, right. as they unrolled all this stuff over the holiday week, and I said, they're letting her walk for sure. But then he starts laying out the criminal case, and he comes in and he says, hey, was there classified information? And then later on he says, yes, there was classified Classified right. information. Was it improperly stored and transmitted? Yes, he says. But then he leaves himself and a subjective out. He says, was it intentional? Was it grossly negligent? And then when he goes on, he says, well, we didn't find... I thought that was an important clip I didn't get to yesterday, breaking it all down. There is so much news. Gigantor global transmission uh, lined up for you here today. I'm your host, Alex Jones. Strap yourselves in. I remember nine years ago having Dr. Jerome Corsi and, and many other researchers on who had written and compiled books showing uh, the school records of Barack Obama, showing uh, different statements and different publications that he'd written for him, that he was a Muslim. And that he, of course, had gone to Madrasa Religious School in Indonesia. The first major foreign speech he gave was in Cairo, Egypt, just a few weeks after being in office, and if you remember back to 2004, it was all over the foreign news, but also our own news, that the Muslims were blown away that he had better pronunciation, better pronouncements of the Islamic text than most of their top imams. And then he's got his cousins and his half-brothers and all these people that are at the forefront in Kenya of the political arm of Islam. And then, of course, there's the military arm attacking police stations, shooting up shopping malls and parochial schools. And even back then, nine years ago, when he was candidate Obama, I was just like, this is too much. Okay, he's wearing some Muslim garb. He goes to some Muslim weddings. Maybe he went to a madrasa when he's a kid. Okay, but there's no way the establishment, as bad as they are, would actually put a radical Islamicist in power. And that's one of the few things I've said on air that I really made a big miscalculation on a big mistake. 
I knew that they were funding the radicalization of Islam. I knew that they were manipulating it, using the threat to take our liberties. But I really didn't think that the elite would actually want to bring in gigantic hordes of unwashed third world Muslims and then start catering to them at every level. Now, we've been aware in Europe for five years and the U.S. for two years of massive stealth illegal invasion called migratory movements of jihadists. Most of them are military age men. In fact, if you go back uh, to even a few months ago, even Interpol said around 80% are military age men. Most of them aren't Syrian. They just claim they're Syrian and they have fake passports. But the Germans, the Swedes, the French, and others are accepting it. Then we look at what's happening on our border where thousands a month of other than Mexicans is what they're called on the Border Patrol files come across just at the McAllen sector alone that they catch. And they estimate that they're only catching a fraction. We've talked to the Border Patrol union head in that area, 20%. Jakari was just down there a week and a half ago. We have those interviews. Obama has done everything he can to block the news that this is happening and to block the real numbers. The good news is it's starting to come out. Look at DrudgeReport.com today if you're a TV viewer. If you're a radio listener, go to DrudgeReport.com. We also have this important information mirrored at Infowars.com. And as Drudge points out, and this isn't about who gets credit. I'm glad this is all coming out now. This is not new news. Drudge covered it in 2007, 2008, 2004. I don't think Drudge remembers he did that, but I do. He's got a link to himself in 2008. And we, of course, covered it. It's not about the credit. It's about the good news now that finally this is in major newspapers and Fox News is covering it. Because when they first came out with these in 2004, media said they were fake. Until in some of his own Harvard Law Journals and things, these photos were also discovered. Now, the difference is these are color versions of the black and whites that were already available that have been in print publications put out by Obama to push his multicultural cred on the street. So there's a lot happening here, but when I get up here and I say that our crew, Adon Salazar and, and Kit Daniels and, and Jakari Jackson and, 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 and Zimmerman and, and Ali and everybody else down the border are breaking international news, it's not so we get credit so we can shine attention on our wide open border and the national security crisis, and also illustrate how all this police state theater with the TSA and the spying and the NSA is all a, a joke. Because the Border Patrol, in their own words, is being ordered to, quote, complete the smuggling process in the last three, four years. So it's now as if the heavens have opened up and hell on earth is raining down. Because I'm here to tell you, it's not... 100,000 refugees we've taken in the last few years, and now Obama wants 100,000 more, he's saying. They use that same uh, manipulation in Europe starting five years ago, claiming it was 10,000, then 100,000. Just two years ago, they were saying it was 100,000 in Germany. It was 2 million. So when they say 100,000, they mean a million. And I'm going to tell you something. I've lived in Austin, Texas since I was a sophomore in high school, a junior in high school. My mother's from Austin. I grew up in Dallas. I've been all over the country. I've been on Brown, a lot of areas of the world, too. The only places I've seen this many classically garbed, third world style, orthodox Muslims in the streets is somewhere like London or Toronto. And I mean folks with, with in the nice part of town with rugs on the street, not paying taxes, not paying fees, do, caring less, burning incense and drinking tea, folks. I mean, it's like, it's like Baghdad or something. And now Austin, Texas is like that. So I don't know the numbers, but I know, again, my high school, we have the report on fullwars.com. I'm about to get to the new news here in a moment. Had seven out of, out of, out of 1,000. 400 and something students, you can pull it up, 230 plus were new in the last year from Syria and Iraq, quote, refugees, just the children. So here's the new story. Bill O'Reilly has gotten exclusive photos that are not exclusive. 
They were published years ago by Drudge and the Daily Mail and WorldNet Daily and InfoWars. And, and, and look, everybody knows I don't like Bill O'Reilly because he's too much of an Obama supporter or Hillary supporter. But, but I'm at least glad he's going in this direction. It's just the fact is that Bill O'Reilly's not breaking this. But he is breaking it to the Fox News audience. So it shows a major shift, the fact that they can't hold this information back. And Joel Gilbert, that's made films about this subject, is going to be joining us in the third hour. So the point is, the electronic Berlin Wall covering all this up is breaking. And this isn't the only thing breaking today. Look at this. Bill O'Reilly shares photos of Barack Obama in traditional Muslim dress. He claims are from his half-brother Malik's wedding, saying they prove his deep emotional ties to Islam. Um, Obama tears up for real when he's speaking to an Islamic group and really gets off on it. And that's who he is. And Odinga and, and you know, all these other people that he's been connected to are involved in all sorts of radicalization operations over there in Kenya. And the Muslims that are a minority in Kenya are taking over. That's a fact. And, of course, who is he allied with? Bill O'Reilly shares photos of Barack Obama in traditional Muslim dress. He claims are from his half-brother Malik's wedding, saying they prove his deep emotional ties to Islam. Bill O'Reilly shared photos. The Fox News host said it was very difficult to verify the exact location of the photographs, a similar set of which were released back in 2004 by Malik and previously published on Daily Mail. He claimed they were taken in Maryland in the 1990s. And it just goes on from there. I mean, there is Obama with other members of his family in Islamic dress. There's his family holding up the photos. I mean, this is just a fact. And then there's his wife, Michelle, uh, you know, over there hanging out. And then there's members of his family hanging out with Gaddafi. I mean, this is what's going on. This is where Obama shares his cultural roots, whether he's from Kenya or not. And then when he's in Indonesia, his family puts him in a mosque as well. Of course, a Sunni mosque, a Saudi-backed mosque. So I remember when they were on the news saying in 2003, 2004, we can play the clips, Obama truth squads, just go to YouTube, they're still there. Obama truth squads in Missouri, and it was in other states too, will be out arresting anyone that says he's a Muslim and doesn't want to lower taxes. He is a Christian who will cut your taxes. This is district attorneys and police chiefs, Democrats, on TV in Vermont and Missouri and Michigan and other areas with a script saying, we're going to arrest you if you say he's a Muslim. Well, I could say he's a Martian from Pluto if I want to, or a Chinese jet pilot. Whether it's true or not, I have free speech. But he does have these Islamic ties. And then look at all his actions since then. So here's the big news. This is what Drudge is linked to. We're also compiling an article, boiling this down, because it's a big deal. This is breaking through into the consciousness. O'Reilly reveals unseen photos of Obama in Muslim dress, deep emotional ties to religion that hurt USA. Then you scroll down here, red linked. Obama joint effort with corporations can resettle refugees, quote, limitlessly. Daily Caller, and under that, Muslim camps spread in USA... And then, of course, when there's rapes and assaults, they cover it up. Refugee crisis, majority unemployed. Now, again, you're saying, yeah, tell us something we don't know. The point is, it's now breaking all over the place. And the numbers are secret. I told you, it's big corporations, the Vatican, other big churches, Protestant, you name it, are, 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 are taking not just refugee families from China and Latin America and wherever. They're taking them from the Middle East. And they just give them new ID cards. I mean, the, the city housing here in Austin is just full of, of, of folks. And they are so arrogant. They are so arrogant. We just had cases. It's up on Infowars.com. Paul Watson wrote about it. In Minneapolis, St. Paul, where I've been there years ago, that's where our network space is. An incredible amount of Somalis there. They basically run the cab driving. And they were running around, shooting stuff in the air, and driving down sidewalks and screaming jihad, waving Islamic flags. And the police have confirmed this. Uh, and, and then, of course, they just arrested three jihadis trying to join ISIS, who were Somali, from St. Paul and Minneapolis. I mean, this is crazy. 
Welcome back. I'm your host, Alex Jones. We've got a bunch of guests and information coming up, and I'm going to start breaking that down at the start of the next segment. But first off, uh, I've been building up in the last segment to our reporters being arrested yesterday outside McAllen, Texas, beside the Rio Grande River, um, openly going up and trying to talk to state police, trying to talk to the Border Patrol, uh, trying to a ask where they've been seeing movement, where, where they've been seeing groups coming across is what the press does. Uh, we've done this in Arizona, New Mexico. Countless other news crews have done this. Um, I mean, in Arizona, there's there's militias with, you know, firearms out there aiding the Border Patrol in apprehending people. Uh, and I guess because we were nice to the uh, state police and the Border Patrol, uh, they then um, illegally arrested them, uh, Zimmerman, Alley, and Biggs, and took their legal firearms and then tried to make them pay hundreds of dollars a piece to, quote, unimpound them. So I don't want to have to do this, but I'm going to have to sue them. I just, I just have to do it. And because they hire these young people, these Border Patrol folks that now are just delivery agents for illegal aliens. The Border Patrol Union has said that on Fox News. We, quote, complete the smuggling process. So they make you put your hands up. And this is after our crew was driving around trying to interview people. Because, see, they're not threatening. They, they need to then practice pretending uh, like they're Border Patrol on them. Uh, and, 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 of course, I notice it's a very high ratio of female Border Patrol agents. This looks like this is some type of training op. You've got an older Border Patrol guy there, and then they've got the ladies out learning who the enemy is. And you really come to grips with the fact that the American people really are the enemy. Now, when you actually talk to the Border Patrol Union, they don't like what's happening. They understand they're being given orders that are criminal. Supreme Court told Obama, stop doing what he's doing. It's illegal. He just said, I'm going to keep doing it. He even said, I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, so they just uh, basically were able to upload some of this footage last night. More is coming up. Joe Biggs will join us with others, uh, with the others that went through this. But I looked at the laws. I looked at, quote, the signs they have that just say state land. Don't, no trespass. Don't, you know, uh, secure area. N not a fence. Just right there by a major town. And just says state land. So they then talk to them about what they're doing. They go, oh, we're down here with some cameras to catch the illegals coming across. Hidden cameras. Oh, come show us where they are. And then you go show them and they arrest you. And it, it, it is an arrest when they take your firearms and put handcuffs on you. And have you put your arms up and uh, hold you for two hours and then, and, then, and then take your firearms. Because God forbid a slave have a gun. You know, only these government bureaucrats out there acting tough and their snake leggings can have them. And I'll tell you why they're upset. The footage that Biggs and others shot of drugs being brought across the Rio Grande nearby this area and talking to the head of the emergency management, Mr. Pagan, who said, no, we're, the Border Patrol brings them to us. The illegals get here. We load them on buses, give them vouchers. They're not tested for disease. And then we ship them into the United States. We have the Border Patrol, the head of emergency management for McAllen, all of it on tape. And our news is, it ends up being on ABC News, Fox News, Drudge Report, everywhere. And it's Congress is now talking about it. Repeatedly on the campaign trail on national TV, Donald Trump plugs InfoWars and talks about our footage. While he was in El Paso, the day he was there, he came in in the afternoon. That morning, we got the footage of the giant bales of drugs being brought in. And for that, they now, like highwaymen, robbed my reporters of their firearms. Let's 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 start playing the clip from me uh, from from the past with with Trump, and then right through to today. Here it is. What happened? So while we're there, you probably read it. It was in Drudge, who's great, by the way. Drudge is amazing. But the story in Drudge, and big story. It's all over the place now. Guys swimming across and. Big bags of stuff, drugs, swimming across the river, right? Swimming right across. And they put the drugs, and actually the camera crew, or the reporters, were petrified because they thought they were going to be killed. Because they're showing this on camera, the guy's carrying bags of stuff, it was drugs. So, what happened to today in particular is that the Border Patrol dropped off some, they call them detainees, but right. obviously they're not detained after they drop them off. Mm -hmm. And uh, normally they have tickets or arranged transportation to go somewhere in the interior. Well, today... You, you know, hit stop right there because there's more of this. 
some of them didn't, hadn't had trans. I'm going to come back after break and just play the whole thing again. See, they don't want us catching the drugs coming across, and they don't want us catching the illegals coming across. So let me tell the militia and the patriots and the citizen reporter stuff. Going out and apprehending illegals to give them to the Border Patrol, who most of the time are ordered to turn them loose, is doing nothing. Information war is the way to go. So I'm going to have to get down to the border now. Oh, I'm coming. And I'm going to call on everybody to start going down to McAllen and exercising our First Amendment. Do you understand state police? And do you understand Border Patrol? You may be involved in treason and dereliction of duty. We're not scumbags! I'm trying not to get mad because I know that it is the criminal federal government openly run by foreign mega banks that I'm about to list here in a moment that are getting rid of our borders, bringing us into globalism and using departmentalization to do it. But we have fought harder than anybody. And no one but DrudgeReport.com and WorldNet Daily have picked up the videos. We've gotten scores of them of the Border Patrol loading the illegals, men, women, and children, in many cases with drug-resistant diseases like tuberculosis, on the buses. They're flying in refugees from the Middle East that are really Sunni pilgrims, Sunni homesteaders, Sunni radical jihad wagon trains. It's literally beyond a science fiction movie that it's so massive and they've been covering it up. And then thank God, it's finally in some news stories today. And then our reporters are down at the border, super polite, super nice, friendly body language. They know full well who we are, already talked to my reporters the day before, and then they got the orders to have them put their hands up and then take their firearms off their sides and then steal them. And I looked at the law. We've called the lawyers. I already knew this before, uh, before I called lawyers. You can't sit there and just take people's firearms and make them pay, you know, 200 and something bucks a piece to get them back. I mean, this is just such a joke. But you know what? I'm glad you followed your illegal orders. I'm glad you did this, dirtbags. Because let me tell you something. You're showing America who you work for. Now, it's one thing if the head of the union comes out and says we're ordered to complete the smuggling process, it's illegal, Congress needs to stop it. That person isn't guilty. The head of the Border Patrol Union in that sector wanted to talk to us and expose the diseases and how it was illegal. But I'm telling you, when you follow illegal orders... And you confiscate people's camera equipment and go through it and treat us like criminals when you knew all three of those people don't have criminal records and Joe Biggs is honorably discharged from the U.S. Army. Decorated combat vet, and that's why he's the enemy. You hate us because we're good people exposing the crime against the country. And by the way, I'm not numb to all this, okay? I mean, it looks like a Baghdad bazaar at the, at the domain in North Austin, outdoor mall. Many nights at the, at the, at the B B Barton Creek Mall, it looks like that. The numbers are got to be over a million, folks. I mean, just Austin is crawling now. With people just walking down the street in full Islamic guard. Women's faces covered up. J Somalis running around, black, shooting guns out windows and driving through yards and screaming, Allah Akbar, screaming, we can rape your women under Sharia. And people being raped all over in Islamic brainwashing camps, opening up in high schools to, quote, teach you to accept the Islamification, and then the women come in and teach Islam, and they're not covering their faces, but at home they're all basically covering their faces up. I mean, it's, they come here where all this freedom is, and then tell us we've got to conform to them, and then the state police, along with the Border Patrol, and because and, and, I've watched a bunch of the videos, they're up on Infowars.com, there's so much of it, I, 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 we got to go through it all. Maybe some of the news crew can just dig through it and get me some of the clips for later when Joe Biggs and crew joins us in about an hour or less. But it's all up on Infowars.com. It's all up on the YouTube channel. We're writing articles about it right now. And it really is the war on the press because we're effective. Just last week, we've got the Border Patrol union head going, yes, we release 80% under orders. We release people that have drug-resistant TB, scabies, all these other diseases. It's horrible. It's unbelievable. 
And we believe the president should follow the Supreme Court's ruling and follow the law. Just a year ago, they would arrest Border Patrol for talking like that. But th th that guy's putting his life on the line, his name on the line to tell the truth. And, and by the way, our article got almost no coverage. Drudge linked to it. Infectious tuberculosis is spreading across the country. 22% of the Islamics being brought in have it, according to the Associated Press. And oh, but don't worry, interpreters needed for schools around the country to take the refugees, and they're not even testing them. Just to see what the government can get away with. I want to believe in the state police. I want to believe in the Border Patrol. I don't want to go along with the Soros line and have some stupid civil war. I'm not out to get anybody, but I'm going to tell you something. When law enforcement follows illegal orders, is involved in dereliction of duty, just following orders doesn't cut it, and when they sit there with this self-assured, imperious attitude, abusing the press and the First Amendment in this country, it makes me sick. It, it absolutely just infuriates me. But I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to call on everybody. Because this is meant to be seen and scare everybody away from the border. I'm going to call for everybody to go down in press grips, organize with your church, whatever, and just go down there with cameras and show what's going on. Because they just think we're all going to sit here like cowards and let them cover up what's going on while the Border Patrol delivers the illegals once they come across the border to three hots in a cot, and then they're put on buses and sent wherever they want, private buses. And they don't like Donald Trump retweeting our stories, retweeting our articles, our, our videos. They don't like that. They don't like the fact he's exposing it in this election year. We're only a few months out. July, August, September, October. We are like three, four months out, three and a half months out. And they don't want you to see this. And so that's one thing of criminal Hillary, crooked Hillary, and crooked jihadist Obama want to block us. I know they're the enemy. I know why they're doing it. But when I sit there and I see the state police bugging their eyes out at Americans and reporters who've got courage to defend this country, and I see your enjoyment at lapdogging to the enemies of this country, shame on you and shame on your family name. You have disgraced your family. You are disgraceful, disgraceful people. You are a shame to Texas, and a shame to the United States of America. I know you don't care. You think it's funny, don't you? This country is getting ready to lose everything it's got and everything it ever has. And it's traitors like you, cowards, and yes men, and women. That are the reason this country's going to hell. I guess there have been more patrol agents that did their jobs and exposed the guns being shipped down to be shipped to Al-Qaeda. That's now confirmed. I guess they get killed. So I guess you kill a few of them. You kill a few of the men, and I guess you put in nothing but a bunch of women. And, and look, it's on average. It's not that women can't have courage. It's, not, it's just known that tyrannies tend to put in women as their enforcers. And the most imperious, arrogant, aggressive people I've ever dealt with in quote law enforcement have almost always been women with chips on their shoulders who think they're married to the state like some Janet Reno got daddy issues but when they violate the first amendment they violate everybody's rights the articles are up on infowars.com It's the Border Patrol's sworn job to try to keep the diseases out, to try to check and make sure drug dealers and terrorists aren't coming in. And they've been ordered three years ago to stand down. They blew the whistle, so I said, great, they're doing their job. And then we start exposing it in the election cycle, and they now want to shut that down. There needs to be an investigation. Congress needs to look into what's happening. And the good news is they tried to three years ago deny this was even happening. Well, guess what? Now it's all being exposed. Just last week, Jakari got the key interview that's up on Infowars.com. I'm going to retweet it. This is what they don't want you to know. This is what our reporters have been arrested for. Border agent 
That's head border agent, head of the union in that sector. Vast majority of illegals released in the country, disease or no disease. And you know, that's a fine headline, but the real headline is Border Patrol, we are ordered to release illegals with diseases. Boom! And, and Hillary's already above the law. Obama's above the law and allowed to just erase the borders outside of even violating law. And then now the Border Patrol violates because they put up signs saying state property outside McAllen. If you're there cane pole fishing, they don't come and arrest you. That stuff doesn't stand up. 100-mile zones into the country that they call constitution-free zones where they claim they can search citizens' cars, but the illegals just get given a flying carpet bus ticket out. That's why I'm not even so much for a wall, because they'll just use the wall to keep us in. And there'll just be an entrance for everybody else to come in. But let's play the clip from just last week and last year of what they don't want you to see and why they're persecuting our reporters. This administration has persecuted more reporters than anybody in U.S. history. That's even liberal publications admit that. And that's what they're doing. And there's nothing more oppressive and nothing that doesn't spell doom for a nation's future like people in paramilitary uniforms harassing the press while they aid and abed the crimes of the president in front of everyone. I want to open the phones up to former Border Patrol or current people or ICE or Customs agents. Am I wrong? Hey, I don't screen your calls. Just, just, just be legitimate. Call in. Am I wrong? Should I not be upset about this? And I'm telling you, everybody needs to go down to the borders. I mean, they got areas 50 miles in Arizona where they got signs saying, don't go into these areas. The cartels control it. How did that happen? I want to hear from you. The toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. But our country is collapsing, and it's by design. If we don't have borders, we don't have a nation. And I'm going to get Joe Biggs and the rest of the crew. I'm going to call Savage. This is the type of thing Savage, only call him every six months, say, hey, you might want to have somebody on about this. And he generally goes, absolutely, that's big news. I think Michael Savage with his giant audience, they need to know that they're now arresting reporters and, and taking their firearms because they're putting out information like this. It was Joe Biggs and our crew. I, I, I want to give credit. There's so many videos. I know who was down there with him last year when he got all this. That, that was it Don Salazar and Zimmerman, or was it Matt who all went down on that show? You know, shooting this. And this is on a major highway right on the border. And then we've got all this other footage this week of people coming across and the Border Patrol taking them to the bus station and shipping them out. They don't want those felonies on tape. Well, guess what? It was Josh with the bags of drugs. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was Josh Owens got that footage. And my crew's great. They're not about credit. I just want to give it where it's due. Our feds arrest reporters articles now red linked on Drudge. So we'll put that up. See, Drudge, you know why I keep plugging Drudge? Because Drudge is one of the only places that helps us break through stuff that affects everyone in this country. Top left corner. Feds arrest press for reporting on open border. Agent government. Completing smuggling cycle for illegals. See, Drudge totally gets it. I went to my reporters this morning and I said, I want you to pull up all the old articles, how they're completing the smuggling process. Uh, how he's got a program with major corporations, Obama does, to ship the illegals in. I want it all in one article. Drudge just did it right there separately without us ever even talking to him. F Drudge gets it. Feds arrest press for reporting on open border. That's our article under it. Agent, government completing smuggling cycle for illegals. That was Fox News. Like, let's cue that up. Let's get that clip again. Muslim camps spread in U.S., not just the physical camps, teaching kids how to be Muslims in public schools. You cannot make it up. More TB spreading. Refugee crisis. Most of them are jobless. Oh, my God. I, I, just, I just cannot believe it. So here's the deal. Congress needs to have criminal investigations of Obama violate the Supreme Court and ordering the Border Patrol to complete the smuggling process. All the heads of ICE and the Border Patrol, the head people that are open globalists, need to be brought in and grilled about how they're ordered by Obama. And all those emails need to be released. And we need to literally use this to defeat crooked Hillary. Well, that's why. And I want to just tell the Border Patrol something. 
most of you are really good people. And you stuck your neck out to give us the information two years ago that Obama had ordered a total stand down. Once we did that, Drudge picked it up, it forced Fox News, and then even the New York Times to admit it, okay? So I'm not saying you're all horrible people. And I support you in your constitutional duty. You've been under attack, but my God, when you see a Benedict Arnold, it's kind of like this. I loved our Continental Army that battled the British. But if I attack Benedict Arnold, it doesn't mean I'm saying George Washington's bad. Benedict Arnold was a traitor. And these people harassing our reporters and stealing their equipment illegally. I, 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 I just, I just, I don't even, I'm not even mad at you. I am disgusted with you. And I know you think it's funny. I know it's all funny to you people. It's not funny what's going on. The country is being dismantled in front of everyone. Most countries have already collapsed into depressions. We're in a depression. You think this government's going to take care of your grandma, your daddy, or whatever, in the nursing home when everything collapses? No, it's not. The only thing we're going to do is save this country. That's the only shot we've got is to stabilize the nation. The globalists are trying to implode it. They're trying to cause a civil war. They're trying to cause absolute insurrection in the streets. They are financing movements to shoot police in cold-blooded murder, taking the, the sad examples of where cops do the wrong thing and magnifying it, and the cops are doing the wrong thing and being bullied by the political correct system to run around and harass liberty lovers worldwide. And Cleveland, we had to sue them twice trying to block us having permitted demonstrations in Cleveland. I mean, it's just disgusting to watch the red carpet rolled out for tyranny. I'm going to skip this network break right here. Please support our local sponsors and the network sponsors too. Or their own. You hear me plug something. That's talk about something. That's that's something I believe in. It's something I'm supporting. It's something I'm endorsing. And that's how we fi finance this operation. Um, I'm going to tell you now, and people always have been coming through. If you buy enough Hillary for prison shirts, I'll uh, put aircraft over D.C. with Hillary for prison. I I've already paid for it. I already signed a contract for Cleveland and, uh, and Philadelphia, RNC, DNC. And, and they're 1995, Hillary for President 2016. Everybody needs to wear them. Everybody needs to get them. Infowars.com, red on the right shoulder. Navy blue shirt, very handsome. Fit great on men and women. And if you buy enough of them, I'll, I'll put Hillary for President or aircraft, you know, just over DC. I don't care. I'll, I'll, I'll put a blimp up. Um, if you buy enough of the nutraceuticals and non GMO seeds and a high quality, storable food, everything you already need, uh, I'm thinking I'm going to open a full time bureau in McAllen. I, I really think that's the answer to this. And uh, we're going to start following the state police and we're going to start following the uh, Border Patrol because we know you've been ordered, at least the Border Patrol, to engage in these crimes. Um, we've been supportive of the governor sending more state police down there, but all they seem to want to do is harass citizens. Uh, and so, okay, fine. Um, we're, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just, we've already, we're already down there every month, but we're going to be all over the border and um, I'll, I'll probably just hire video stringers from the local TV stations. In fact, that's the move. I'm going to hire TV stringers in McAllen. They know all the rows and everybody. I'm going to hire them in um, El Paso and other. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And, and so just, just buy the products, everybody. You need them. They're the best price. And I want to fight tyranny. And uh, we're going to send our reporters down there. And I'm going to go down there after the RNC. I've got that coming up in a week and a half. Two weeks, hard to believe that's already here. Uh, and I will go to the border and I'm going to go to the Border Patrol. I'm going to go to the state police headquarters. And I'm just going to, and they're going to probably act like I'm a devil or something that I dare. Oh, we got an evil American here that thinks he's got a free speech. You know, they'd probably taser me or something. Fine. I'm fed up. I'm tired of it. What is your problem? What is your problem? <laughs> Snap out of it. Snap out of it. InfoWars. Coupled with DrudgeReport.com is the number one source exposing the treason. And we've the Supreme Court has ruled it's illegal. We have the law on our side. All we're doing is defending our country. Treat us with respect. Get off our backs. I expect bad stuff out of Hillary and George Soros and the rest of them. Not out of you. Stop it. 
I'll tell you, really disgrace is all the Border Patrol agents they've killed for exposing this. And the Border Patrol people that have gotten reprimanded and in trouble. And you know what they're doing? They're going more on TV and more on this show. And, 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 she, and, and, and you know what? I look at those men compared to the other little goons, and you are pathetic. I guarantee you those people that reach out to us wouldn't be arresting our reporters. They'd be telling them where to go, where to expose the crime, how to stop it. I'm, man, I'm angry. I am sick of this. I am, I'm beyond that. But I'll tell you why this country is in big trouble. People have lost the instinct to get angry at being violated. They've lost the instinct to stand up for themselves. They've lost basic self-preservation instincts. But it doesn't take a majority to change things. And I don't tell the story because I'm some hero, because believe me, I'm not perfect. But I grew up in a family where we help people change tires. And when our neighbor's house is on fire, you know, we help take them in and stuff. Basic stuff, because we want to be treated like that, too. And I'll never forget the lady choking at the La Madeline restaurant with my wife. We only had one child at the time. And I come out of the bathroom, and this woman is turning purple, hunched over the table, and there are like 20, 30 people saying, call 911, call 911, like parents. Even if the cops got there in three, four minutes, she'd be dead. It takes four minutes to, to asphyxiate. And I said, do the Heimlich. Who knows the Heimlich? And this man goes, wait for the police. And, of course, I was on swim team and stuff in junior high and high school, so I, I'd taken all that with the fire department, and I said, well, I'm going to give her the Heimlich. And I got in there and gave her the Heimlich, the big piece of bread came out, and she went from purple to, you know, red. And then they started saying, oh, you're a hero, you're a hero. And then I heard one person say, I is she okay? Did he hurt you? See, that's, that's how these people are. Don't just not help her. But then did I hurt her? And I mean, she was like a 200-pound woman. I picked her up because the first couple pulls didn't get it out of her. And I just said, let's get out of here before we get sued. And, and, you know, that's what's happening in our society. And that's what's going on. And here's the deal. I see America choking to death. I'm going to try to perform a Heimlich maneuver. And you're not going to stop me. You understand that? You're not going to stop us. And, and by the way, when you do try to stop us, look at the number one news site in the world, more news traffic than the New York Times and Facebook combined. Look at the top red link. You people think you stopped us? Feds arrest press for reporting on open border. You see that? You like that? Now, that's an article from last night before more videos were posted. We've got new videos that are even more powerful. So I need to get Adon Salazar and the rest of our crew to add to this and to add the latest videos that we've got to the top. And then add the links that are on Drudge under it as well so that people get a full taste of exactly what's going on. Because that's just the first thing they got out last night. And people say, oh, don't make a big deal out of this. They were just checking. They didn't know who you were. No, they knew who they were. And I'm sorry I'm ranting. I'm going to try to settle down. we got some guests coming up and a lot more. There's so much news to get to. But I'm so angry. I'm sweating in here. It's, it's like 70 degrees. I mean, I am, I am, I am, I, I'm just upset. And it's good to be upset. Vladimir Putin, quote, loses it, warns journalist of war. I don't know how to get through to you people. At a press conference, he said, we are going towards war. The West is preparing for major war. And NATO's saying they are. And, and, and Putin's like, we need to stop this. This, this. We need to have a serious discussion about this. So things are escalating. And everybody needs to really get shaken out of their stupor and out of their mind-numbed robot status. That's all I'm saying. Now, before I go any further, and we're going to beef that article up because it was just the first thing we put out in their first video. We've got it all now with all the other videos and all the other stuff and all the other background. The Border Patrol saying they're ordered to complete the border, you know, the smuggling process and the rest of it. We're going to extend the Independence Day specials, as I said, through next Monday. 20 to 40 percent off all the high quality, sortable foods and also 20 percent off Survival Shield Nation I9X2, nine, nine, but also 20 percent off all shortwave radios. 20% off all non-GMO heirloom open pollinated seeds. So there are just a lot of really amazing deals. That's not all is available at InfoWarsStore.com. But the X2 is the good halogen. Our bodies are full of the chlorine, the bromine, the bromide, the, the fluoride, and the good halogen will fill up your glands like your thyroid. That way, your glands don't absorb the bad stuff, and you just pass it out. That's basically... A, 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 a way to boil it down unscientifically. You can go see the science, read the articles, see the informational videos at InfoWarsLife.com. 
And if you haven't tried X2 and haven't detoxed with it, just 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 search engine. IQs went up 15 points when government added iodine to salt. Then they took it back out. 15 point increases. I mean, I mean that's just one thing. My skin changed. I lost weight. I had more energy. I did get more aggressive. Consult your physician before you take it. This is there's no, there's no other real iodine like this that I found. This is the true nascent iodine. The other stuff is just garbage poison in my view. Uh, so that's why they say don't ingest the stuff you get at the grocery store. You put it on topically is disinfectant. It's excellent. But no, this is totally different. Read about it. Why it's proprietary. Infowarslife.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. And uh, I am going to hire stringers on the border. That's the most economical thing to do so I can have them down there all the time. I'm, I'm, in fact, I'm going to put a bounty um, of $1,000 for footage of drugs being brought across. And uh, there's so much of it, but $100 each thing we accept of illegals coming across and $1,000 showing the Border Patrol delivering the illegals across to the buses. The bounty's out. Thank I you pay, for everybody knows that. GCN. And I'm coming down there too. So you like it? I'm going to put 100 reporters down there. Get ready. You know, when my show was a lot smaller 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we could open the phones up specifically for Marines, Army, current active duty, Border Patrol, Homeland Security. We could open the phones up at a university where something was happening. We'd have callers and people shooting video for us. But now because the show's much larger and folks uh, know about the NSA and there's this culture of fear. It's usually all just that kook Alex says they're tracking everybody. Uh, and, you know, then the DEA is doing parallel construction, setting people up. Oh, yeah. Now that it's all out and confirmed and Zuckerberg says cover up your webcam and then, you know, the smart TVs are watching you. It's like, oh, oh, Alex, I run into cops all the time. Listen, we can't call in. We might get in trouble. You're going to lose everything if you get in this national security attitude where your free speech doesn't exist because you're a secret agent and can't talk about how Obama ordered you to have the border open. We've not had one Border Patrol agent call in or ICE or Customs person. And on a regular day, we got Border Patrol calling in, um, D, former DEA people, you name it. But see, notice today, because they know. I mean, Obama's up there threatening everybody not to talk about his crimes. And I, and I guess at a certain point, you know, we just roll over and that's the end of the country. And then follow the orders to go out and persecute the press because they're not cowards, because they're willing to come down and cover what's going on. Our reporters are coming on at the bottom of the hour to break all this down. Stories up on drugsreport.com. Feds arrest press for reporting on open border. Infowars Journal is disarmed and held by federal agents. And we probably want to add the headline for two hours. And we're told they were under arrest. So there's a lot of the video. And there's the video the day before where the state police run up behind them, almost hit them. Then they pull over and talk to them nicely. It's like, what, what are you doing? We're just here. Yeah, we got hidden cameras down here. And we're, you know, the motion cameras. And we're getting people coming across. We're getting drugs coming across. And that's what, again, they're scared of. I want to go out to break with what they're scared of. This is, the, the, this is our crew exposing drugs, exposing illegals, and the Border Patrol completing the smuggling process. Here it is. What happened? So while we're there, you probably read it. It was in Drudge, who's great, by the way. Drudge is amazing. But the story in Drudge, and big story, it's all over the place now. Guys swimming across, and big bags of stuff, drugs, swimming across the river, right? Swimming right across. And they put the drugs, and actually the camera crew or the reporters were petrified because they thought they were going to be killed because they're showing this on camera. The guy's carrying bags of stuff. It was drugs. What happened to today in particular is that the Border Patrol dropped off some, they call them detainees, but right. obviously they're not detained after they drop them off. Mm -hmm. And uh, normally they have tickets or arranged transportation to go somewhere in the interior. Well, today, apparently for some logistical reasons, some of them didn't, hadn't had transportation arranged or their transportation is tomorrow. Right. And so we're having to find places to shelter them for tonight. So we've accessed some resources that we have. We're going to shelter them here tonight. So uh, why is the Border Patrol bringing them here? They're not bringing them here. They're bringing them to our bus terminal because that's where the Border Patrol understands that they have transportation to go to the interior. Right. So they're dropping them off. It's our understanding that they were dropped off with tickets or with vouchers for tickets. Um, it turns out some of them didn't tonight, didn't right. have their ticket or didn't have their voucher. Or, like I said, 
their buses until tomorrow, so they got nowhere to stay. Our bus terminal bars, I mean the city of McAllen, mm -hmm. bus terminal is not a 24-7 operation, right. so we've got to put them up somewhere else. So for tonight, we're doing the best we can with this resource, which thankfully one of our neighboring cities right. made available to us, and we're going to put them up here tonight. Tomorrow we'll have a little chat with the Board of Patrol and City. All right, and there's right. more when we come back. This is our new footage from last week as the people pour in, the Border Patrol gets them and then takes them, takes them to get food, takes them whatever, doesn't do a medical exam, throws them on private buses, pays for it, bye-bye. And the Border Patrol is desperate, at least the Border Patrol following Obama's orders, are desperate to cover up the crime. The rest of the Border Patrol is blowing the whistle on it. So it's, wow. That's right, the government has been overrun by criminal multinationals that are openly trying to condition the public that they can break any law they want that they're above the law, whether it's Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, or the Border Patrol, following illegal orders to complete the smuggling process. And by the way, they're finding the clip from Fox News where one of the Border Patrol senior agents said that a few years ago, just weeks after our reporters were tipped off, Jakari Jackson and Don Salazar, Kit Daniels, to go down to the border and actually show the illegals being loaded on buses and shipped into the U.S. Now, I want to go over some of those articles that are on DrudgeReport.com, flashbacks of this. Border Patrol agent, U.S. government completing the smuggling cycle for illegals. CBS News. Below that article on the left-hand side of DrudgeReport.com, Obama administration joint effort with corporations can resettle refugees limitlessly. And then the Daily Caller just, this is not their opinion. This, they wrote this off a press release from the White House. WhiteHouse.gov. White House announced last week See, we get our info from them that it was launching a, quote, call to action. This is against the Supreme Court, against law. This is so crazy. Asking private businesses to help with the resettlement of refugees. That's the military age jihadis. This could be done without regard to government cap of 85,000 total refugees, including 10,000 Syrian refugees. The, the number's 20, 30, 100 times that we don't know. It, it, I mean, we know it's much more massive. It's, in Austin, it's got to be 30,000 or something. I mean, you just go to the malls now, and it's just people in full headdresses everywhere. I've shown it. I've shown the video and photos here. I mean, it's crazy. And again, it's out of nowhere. And, and articles all over the country of rapes and attacks and Somalis going crazy, screaming Allah Akbar in Minneapolis, St. Paul last night. I mean, it's, it's just everywhere. <clears throat> Fifteen founding corporations. Guess who's at the top of the list? Goldman Sachs. Going after your guns. Going after the family going after non-GMO crops, going after vitamins and, 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 and supplements, Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs. Oh, guess who else? Google, HP, <coughs> IBM, oh, J.P. Morgan Chase & Co., LinkedIn, Microsoft, all the eugenics crew, MasterCard, UPS, TripAdvisor, Western Union. The call initiative is not only to help refugees in the United States, but all over the world. This is the UN organizing them. That's why the former founder of the EU, Peter Sutherland, took the junior job of being over migrants, refugees, and resettlement, because that's the globalist weapon system now. And jihadis make perfect little time bombs. <laughs> so continuing... In Europe, for example, MasterCard worked with Mercy Corps to distribute prepaid debit cards to eligible refugees traveling through Serbia to get to Western Europe. Approximately 75,000 was distributed to nearly 400 families, individuals. This is just some little minor thing they mentioned. The three main facets of the private partnership program are education. That means organizing them into socialist brigades. Employment, you're taking your job, driving down wages. And Enablement, getting them into government, getting them in power. And then it goes through education means facilitating refugee children and young adults, educating and ensuring that refugee students can access schools at all levels, like here in Austin at my alma mater, 230 plus at the high school. The employment facet includes increasing employment opportunities for refugees. I remember an AP article like 10 years ago that I hammered, and it was the National Banking Association saying, we're going to give illegals bank loans that citizens don't get. Just because just they're special, we're going to do it. Just basically fake loans. Again, to incentivize bringing people in to drive down wages 
And when, and when they don't pay up, the government then comes in and bails that out. They're just using the illegals as kind of a cutout to run government funds through, but most of it goes to these select corporations and private groups managing it. I mean, you know how much money the Catholic Church is getting to house the illegals all over the United States? They're getting government money under the faith-based initiative, billions. Look it up. But Pope Francis has big walls and won't let anybody into where he lives. By the way, Joe Biggs, I was listening to all the stuff our reporters have done because nobody else will do their job. And I was thinking about Biggs and our crew driving in to an area over the border from El Paso that is said to be the most dangerous place in Mexico, maybe the world. The whole movie that just came out with Josh Brolin that's so incredibly accurate, according to my sources, uh, Sicaria. Which I guess means Hitman. If I'm pronouncing it right, is based right over the border there. They went in. There was the mosque. Sure enough, it's now been confirmed. The FBI was waiting at the airport saying, thank you so much for what you did. We need to debrief you. We, we're not even allowed to go over there. It's so dangerous. Do you have any idea how dangerous that was? Our crew is doing things that is a serious service to this country. And I, by the way, they're putting their lives in the line and, and, and need your support and prayers. And I tell them not to stick their neck out too far, but Biggs, you know, is... Been a lot of combat and stuff and wants to do it. So he, he's been over the border. And I mean, in the most dangerous areas. And a year later, it was confirmed, yes, there is ISIS in that area. They're coming across. ISIS said they'd do that. And then after we broke that, the head of Southcom came out and said, we know thousands of ISIS are coming through the Caribbean and then through Mexico and then through Texas. Southcom. Info wars with that story that Judicial Watch and others picked up, that Drudge picked up, forced that out, Southcom came out, the FBI then came out and said, yes, this is credible. And then, of course, it gets shut down politically. So our reporters, if you just joined us, were arrested yesterday and treated like criminals for more than two hours for doing their job outside of McAllen, Texas, and the state police with the feds are claiming, quote, they were trespassing, but oh, we're not going to charge you because down the road there's a sign saying state property. No fences, no nothing by the Rio Grande River. Yeah, we live here too. It's not like it's some state preserve, you know, where you've walled it off and then you, you have to give the public access, but you can make them pay $5. You're just declaring it's yours. Kind of like Obama declares the borders open and declares he'll continue, you know, shipping people in even if the Supreme Court says it's illegal. <sighs> kind of like Chicago and places say, we don't care what the Supreme Court says about guns. We're still banning them. And it just goes on and on and on. Look at Zimmerman with these ridiculous Border Patrol agents and state police. What a joke. Hey, well, guess what? You failed and your boss failed. Obama failed and Hillary failed. The info's getting out. And I hope Trump picks up on this too. And we're going to add a video that, that, that do put together of, of why they don't want us there. This is why they don't want us there. The FBI is getting the information. We're forcing the fact that ISIS is there. We're forcing the fact that the Border Patrol has been ordered to complete the smuggling process and causing a national debate. We're exposing the just huge floods of Hondurans, Nicaraguans, folks from uh, China, you name it, are just pouring across. And you know what the Border Patrol knows? I guarantee you they're saying, God forbid, upwards of 10% are from China and the Middle East. Oh, my God. And some of them are even criminal Europeans. What is going to happen when 80% are getting through and these reporters that have a line to Drudge and a line to World Net Daily or whatever else and a line to you, tens of millions of listeners, get Alex Jones's crew out of there? Well, listen, I promise you we're going to have reporters and we're going to have crew and we're going to have clandestine stringers, that just means local news people that we pay on, on the side to get us footage. I mean, you're not going to stop anything. And I think I'm going to have a First Amendment rally down at the border coming up. I mean, it's my country, right? I can go down there and show the treason, right? What do you as citizens, what do you as listeners think about this situation? We're, what do you think we should do about it? Because here's the deal. We're having a big effect. This is great news. But, but how do we go further to take action? Open phones. But I'd like to hear from people that have worked in the state, the Border Patrol, state police. I mean, 
How I'm not wrong saying this is outrageous. There it is. Top general says Mexico border security now existential threat to U.S. Looking to Congress for urgent help. The top United States general in charge of protecting the southern border says he's been able to combat the steady flow of illegal drugs, weapons, and people from Central America and is looking for Congress. Yeah, that's not it. It's, it's not Marine Corps general. It's, 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 it's the head of Southcom. You just type in. Head of Southcom says ICE is coming into the Caribbean, getting into the U.S. It was uh, two years ago. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I'll find it during the break. That's the one we always pull up for some reason. That, that, that's another one. This is particularly ISIS. But we did find the clip. This is from Fox News, in case you don't believe CBS and the Border Patrol. This is Hannity two years ago after we forced all this out with drudge. And it's not about credit. It's understanding if other press would go down and cover this, it'd be a national issue. We could turn this around and fix it. They have to keep it in the dark. They have to keep it secret. So here's the Border Patrol agent talking about how they complete the smuggling process. Um, it sounds like they're supposed to be protecting this border. You mean aiding and abetting. What do you mean specifically? Actually, what's happening is that the uh, federal government is actually completing the smuggling cycle uh, by having a parent sending their, their child to the uh, U.S. border, have them, having them smuggled. Uh, that is only part of the, of the smuggling cycle. Then it comes to, the federal government steps in. We apprehend them. We process these illegal aliens, and then we release them to their to their family members in the U.S. We just completed that smuggling cycle. Now, why would anybody want to hire a smuggler when the U.S. government is actually uh, doing it for free? So, in other words, when when your agents put their lives on the line, and there sometimes are violent incidents, and they do their job. All right, that's those that's Hector that Garcia. The law, they still end up staying. Does that what is, what does that do to the the psyche? The that's Hector Garcia. Bucking the crime syndicate. They've murdered Border Patrol agents to talk about this. They've fired them. They've, they've done administrative hatchet jobs on them. That's a real man right there. That's a patriot. That's the opposite of the thug-like people that our reporters were accosted and illegally detained and legally arrested. That's official oppression. Folks, take on the fact that there is an admitted plan to persecute the Border Patrol, ICE agents, and others to try to expose the fact they've been ordered to illegally open the border. It took us years to get people to even know this was going on. Now the Supreme Court ruled. Obama is just flaunting it. And now they've gone further to harass the press and arrest my reporters because they're so effective and they're all over national news. Well, guess what? You're going to get the opposite response to what you did. Legal action, unfortunately, which I don't want to mess with. I'm not out to get you. But when you're out to get the First Amendment, we're going to stand up. Don't tread on me. And we're going to now... I guarantee you double or triple the amount of reporters on the border. I, I mean, because th this is ongoing. The globalists will probably, when a Republican gets in, if it isn't Trump, or, 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 or you know, if, if, if Trump doesn't know what's going on, they'll probably leave the border open. I mean, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. And I'm not giving up. Right when people are ready to wake up and take action. Mark, Dennis, Dan, Rob, Jim. Uh, Mark wants to comment uh, on the situation from Arizona. Go ahead. Look, look. Alex, I think I'm just about as pissed off as you are. Out here in Arizona, there's a law in the books, and I'm sure there's something similar in Texas, that any law enforcement officer, prosecutor, judge, or anybody in between is committing a major felony by the suppression of any information, evidence, et cetera, leading to a, a prosecution in a criminal case. Now, I think that Biggs and your other reporters are probably being leaned on to get. That's right, away because it's not just official oppression. When they're trying to block people exposing a crime, there's all sorts of statutes dealing on that. It's on the tip of my tongue. It's uh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's going to pop in there in a minute, but but it, obviously it's a big deal when you've got real reporters that are national reporters that are the real deal, being very nice, and you're arresting them and you're in their face. You are really involved with some bad activity. When I uh, get into town so I can get on the Internet, I'll try and look it up in Texas law, and I'll uh, send it to your tips line. But people need to understand that there's a whole series of laws for the average citizen to protect themselves, and it's called citizen's arrest. And uh, here it's pretty extensive in Arizona. I'm not sure how it is. No, I mean, there's a right to resist. There's a, there's a castle deal, and, and they try to make people forget this is happening or going on. But this is everybody's right. I mean, the police as well, as a citizen, 
uh, that's how citizens are able to arrest people or stop people or bring people in or citizens can bring in illegals they find on their property. That's your right. And, and there, it's in every state. If a cop is mentally ill or, or a dog catcher and is attacking you or, or, or going crazy, of course you have a right to defend yourself. I mean, that's there. It's, it's codified in law. And they have articles all the time demonizing, uh, you know, folks that talk about that. But, but it's a reality. Here's my issue. It's illegal what Obama's doing. It's been ruled by the Supreme Court. We've documented it. We're the people that documented it, okay? Again, it's not about the credit. We're being persecuted because we're willing to go do it and put our names on it when nobody else does. You look at the other reporters for other great sites like Breitbart uh, and some of the others. They will not, most of them, put their names on it because it's dangerous, and I understand why. Um, they've got a few people that, that do it with Breitbart, Texas. Or we've got a lot of, you know, have, have, say what you want about them, but, you know, they have some courage to be down there. And it's the same thing for, for Daily Caller. So it's not about the credit. It's about the fact that we have a giant audience on radio, TV, and Internet. Drudge is the biggest thing out there and links to our key stories. So we're being persecuted and suppressed, and it's a big deal. Great points, Mark. Dennis in Texas says he's a retired federal contractor with info on the border. What's your view on this? Uh, Alex, I think you guys have been doing a great job down there. You've uh, shown the spotlight on uh, what the situation is. You're, uh, you're, you're not really um, reporters or journalists. You're actually activists. Um, I think that's the, the reason. No, you're right. We're desperate they, Americans that didn't run the white flag up to, to the world government. You're right. Exactly. And that's why they're so afraid of you, because you're not playing by the rules. OK, but you need help. I think that because the United States is being attacked, the reason they're being attacked right now and overrun by Muslims is because we're, we're a Christian nation that uh, promotes capitalism. It's been very, very successful. They can't compete with us. Country. Exactly. They got to bring us down because world government and collectivism can't compete with Americana. And they have to destroy it. And the two ways to destroy it is to is to cow the cow the Christians and and destroy the fundamentals of capitalism by overregulating everything and overrun us now, with 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 Muslims and then make every school teach Muslim awareness, kiss their butt day in some new political correctness crud. I don't think that these people. I I lived and worked in, in the Middle East for eighteen years. I'm going to tell you, Americans, you don't know what's coming. We are all Kaffirs. There are only... Dennis, Dennis, only listen, I've got Joe Biggs and others coming on, but come back with us if you can hold. I want to come back to you so, so you can finish what you're saying with, with our reporters still down there at the border being persecuted. We're on the march. The First Amendment, the folks. Empire's on the, the First run. Amendment. Alex Jones. So you hear about press being persecuted in foreign countries for exposing corruption. But we've seen unlimited persecution at record levels of the press by Obama, uh, persecution of whistleblowers that expose corruption. We've even seen leftist publications <coughs> come out and admit that Obama is many times worse than Bush or any other president in history at this. And now we've seen our incredible reporters, <coughs> people like Joe Biggs and, and, and Don Salazar, Jakari Jackson, and just uh, Kit Daniels, the whole great crew that goes down there to the Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, and California border. And we interview the Border Patrol. We interview them with their faces blurred out. We interview the ICE agents. We interview the heads of the unions. These are good Americans, some of the best people out there saying, we've been ordered to do illegal things. We don't like it. I played the clip earlier. CBS News, Fox News, Border Patrol saying, we're ordered to complete the smuggling process. Congress, please stop it. Supreme Court, stop it. Well, they've said stop it. It's been ruled illegal. It was already illegal. Obama continues it. So now our reporters start going down there every week to McAllen and to El Paso and other areas. And man, suddenly the state police and the Border Patrol are after them. They arrested them, had to put their hands up for two hours, took their guns, made them pay to get them back. We looked, that's outside of law. My reporters were basically bushwhacked. They were robbed. Just because you got a badge and a gun doesn't mean you're God. And they claim, oh, well, we just say this whole border area is state property. Uh, it doesn't say no trespassing. And I looked it up. This is total power grab. But why not? Obama's already outside the law doing this. Obama's already ignoring Congress. Why not?
So that's why I'm so upset about this. But the good news is DrudgeReport.com, top red link with all the links under it, CBS News, you name it. In fact, let's take that Hannity clip out of Fox and put it on YouTube and just add the clip itself of the Border Patrol agent saying we complete the smuggling process and, and add that to the end of the clip where Jakari's talking to the emergency manager and he says the Border Patrol ships them in, puts them on buses, gives them vouchers and lets them go with diseases. And then the Border Patrol union had last week telling us the same thing. And, and Donald Trump showing Josh Owens and Biggs getting the drugs being shipped across and it being national news and, and say, this is why they're arresting our reporters because they don't want you to know. They need to haul Obama's butt in front of Congress and haul his attorney general that's running all this before Congress and the head of ICE and say, it's illegal, stop it, and now you just won't stop the illegals. You let the diseases in, but you're arresting reporters. So I'm going to go to Biggs and to your calls, and I want to get Zimmerman's take and Allie's take. You know, we're a little bit chivalrous here. She's a lady. She speaks great Spanish. She wanted to go down there. She went down there. That's why I don't like sending ladies down there, but... I guess we're being, you know, modern, so you know, put the women in the in the combat situation. Uh, but I don't really want to say her last name and expose her because the cartels aren't very nice people. They've now started chopping women's heads off down there. But again, they just don't want you to know this is going on. It's insane. Uh, but it's a national news story now, so they failed to get this out. Just recap what happened, what unfolded for people, uh, Joe Biggs, encapsulate this because from watching her videos and seeing it. I know you guys filmed uh, a lot of this. They took your cameras. Like you were talking to them. You said what you were going to do. They came and sit there while you're doing and acting like you're doing something wrong. And then they grab you and your cameras and then made you pay them money later to supposedly try to get your firearms. Or have you gotten the firearms uh, yet? There's a lot we don't know. Uh, Joe Biggs, Infowars.com, reporter. Uh, you're now there, I guess, in, a, in inside a city. Tell us where you've moved to, because I guess you're not supposed to be anywhere in the countryside or near the border, according to uh, judge, jury, and executioner, uh, the Border Patrol. So break this down, Joe Biggs. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now we're at the McAllen Convention Center. We're away from the border. Yeah, and we've been told we can't go back down around the border. Anything that's considered a wildlife refuge, anything out like that, again. Oh, for the it's next for the earth years. now. Only the illegals can. I mean, there's no law, Joe. That's pure bull. Go ahead. I, I, I was charged with criminal trespassing. So you've been charged. Meanwhile, yeah, they gave us tr criminal trespassing. We had to pay. We were extorted. Had to pay $690 to get our firearms back. We were extorted. I mean, that's plain and clear. What you see police do in Mexico. Okay, when okay, 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 over. okay. Start over, start over. I didn't realize it was this bad. Oh, my God. So you're like by McAllen at the border where there's people everywhere, folks fishing, you name it. And they're saying press can't be there. And they've actually charged you. I didn't know that. Start over. Walk through what happened, Joe. So this is what happened. Yesterday, we went out to the border early in the morning. We went and took the SD cards out of the uh, tree cams that we had set up. Cameras you can go buy at Cabela's, you know, for hunters. Set those up so we could kind of monitor the, the traffic throughout the night because we got there late the other night. Come back in the morning, pull the, the cards. We're heading out to leave. And a state police officer stops us and goes, you can't be here. And that's the video that we have up on Twitter where the cops go and, hey, you can't be here. This is trespassing. So we were just like, all right, whatever, we're leaving. So we took off. The vehicle turned around and chased us out of there, sped up, got right on our bumper. After we were hundreds of yards away from him, he sped up behind us and then chased us off of there, stayed on the road. And we pulled off and went onto the main road, the paved road. Well, we're sitting here going, well, we have cameras down there. We need to go get them. So we called the local DPS uh, department. We actually went to the location here, the Department of Public Safety, and got a number for a police officer. Uh, we contacted that police officer, the state police, and he drove us. He met us at the area where we left our uh, outside, where we left our cameras, and he followed us in all the way out there. He then gets out of his vehicle and goes, this is public property. You can be here. They were wrong telling you that we're trespassing. We have this on camera. A Border Patrol vehicle pulls up Alex. He gets out. And he goes, yeah, you're fine, man. If you need anything, let me know. If you see any families coming across the border, let us know. And he said, just make sure that you're careful. This is a bad area. Bad people do come over. Uh, it's not just families. It, there's you know older men. There's drugs, things like that. So just be safe when you're out here. We said, okay, thank you for your time. The sheriff or the uh, Texas State Police officer drove off. The Border Patrol guy went back. And we went on to go check on the other camera real quick to make sure it hadn't been messed with. At this point, we've been told that we can now stay. We don't, we're not trespassing anymore. And, we, and let's be clear, the Border Patrol has wide open borders under Obama's order. 
But now they're the Border Patrol telling citizens they're trespassing on, on public land by a major town. I mean, this is just totally ridiculous. It's like saying you can't walk by the river in Baton Rouge. It's a public right of way. I mean, this is so crazy. So please continue. So we get down to the next camera. Zimmerman and I step out of the vehicle and uh, we start filming a stand up talking about how, you know, we were told we couldn't be here earlier, but now we have police show up and Border Patrol saying, in fact, that we could be there. Within a matter of minutes, two vehicles from both directions sped up on us. As I was getting back in the vehicle, we just finished filming the stand up and I see the first police vehicle speed at me and slams on brakes and I jump out of the vehicle. I was like, what's going on? Uh, guys and he goes put your hands up put your hands up and we're like what the hell's going on and next thing you know the other vehicle slams on brakes two other officers get out we're surrounded by four people with their hands at their gun kind of like that and they're telling us to stand back we don't they're like we don't know if you have firearms who are you you're trespassing and i'm sitting there going no we're not trespassing we now is this any of the same people from earlier no these are different people now is the state police or border patrol no this was the game wardens Oh, the game wardens, of there, There's four different entities that watch over this piece of land. So they tell us, hey, does anybody have a firearm? Zimmerman's got one on his side. And oh, the God, game female, wardens are the absolute worst. The female game warden comes over and takes and starts yanking on Zimmerman's uh, side, on his holster. She doesn't even know how to pull a gun out of a holster. There's already one well, in the now chamber. now I understand, because the earlier... Okay, so now I'm getting one of these... these, uh, these those women look so... so just like ignoramuses. They don't look like any type of police I've seen. I get it. So now I understand. One of the they would never actually, dare go near a cartel or an actual criminal. They just see a good American to push around. So now it makes so sense. They're yanking on Zimmerman's uh, belt and trying to get his gun out of his holster. She then leaves the magazine inside the gun, which shows you she has zero experience with firearms, racks it back, ejects around. By then actually putting another round into the chamber and then walking around with it. So they have zero experience with firearms, yet they can handle them. And they said, you know, you can't be out here. This is a dangerous area. And, and, and Michael Zimmerman's like, well, yeah, that's why we have guns with us. You know, meanwhile, we can hear kids coming across the river and they walk over and look like, oh, they're just swimming. They're playing in the river. This is not an area where people play. This is in the middle of nowhere. So you see illegals coming across in front of these buffoons. And we're being, and we're being harassed. So what happened next? We, we as reporters were being harassed and extorted. So we're sitting here and the guy takes our IDs and he goes, all right, I'm running you guys through the system. So they start running our names through the system, come back and said that, oh, well, Zimmerman, huh? Uh, you were here last week. We told you or the, the federal Fish and Wildlife told you you could not be here. They never gave him any paperwork. They never gave any paperwork to a Don Salazar. And it's made up. Or it's Jakarta made up. Jackson. It's all outside of law. Yes, this it's was, like there, it's there, like there, telling black people they can't be at a restaurant or something, you know, because they're black. They have zero. They have zero proof that they can show on paper any kind of report that was done to show oh, that. that you totally done, have them they, with the border patrol that actually had the jurisdiction. Uh, that's the border. That's where the feds have the jurisdiction and the exactly, state police saying but, that. But they, but apparently, they had to hold us in. So when they called in our names, then this federal fish and wildlife game guy hears the names and immediately tells us we have to be held. Oh, that's who so Ted now, Nugent says. Ted knows all the feds. He says they're all overall pretty great people. He says, but the but the fish and wildlife are literal communist demons. Oh, th th this was out of control. So at this point, we're told to keep our hands up. And for an hour, we're sitting here with our hands on top of our hands in the sun. It's 100 degrees. And they're sitting here like... And there's illegals crossing us. right behind you. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's happening at the exact same time. Here's the thing. We were given criminal trespassing charges. But the night before, we saw... Two groups of families come over. They weren't charged with anything. No, what happened was, was a bus came down, picked them up, takes them to the McCallum bus stop. They get a free bus to get wow, out. Wow, you have and footage they go of the bus. Uh, so you have the completion, because so you have the footage of them coming across on the bus and taken. Yeah, they came in and they have the Border Patrol wow, sitting I can't there. wait to see they this. Take them. I mean, look at that. It's crazy. And then you are arrested and charged. Wow. Yeah, but they're released and they go, well, they have a court date. It'll be five years out, but they probably won't make it. But they don't get charged with anything. I got charged as a U.S. reporter, a citizen. I was disarmed. There's your I headline, law-abiding veteran uh, journalist charged for filming on border. I, I mean, it, 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 just, it, 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 it shows you these people are out to get us. And the, fitter, the federal official wildlife guy shows up, and he, kept, he keeps going, 
I'm sorry, you know, you're a veteran. Thank you for your service, but I need to take your guns from you. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to write you the citation. You can't have your guns back. Sorry, veteran. I'm so sorry, veteran. Pay, pay this $230 per person to get your firearms back. Like, this is ridiculous. How can I, me as a U.S. citizen, as a journalist, not be able to walk around? And here's the argument that the local game wardens, the Texas game wardens made. They go, well, if you just pull up Google Earth, the area you're standing at is green, which says it's a wildlife refuge. Well, we actually went and did the research and took screenshots. Where were we at when you pull back? It's not green. I know. But Plus, I know the away. federal and state laws. They have to have fences and signs. You don't there just. Were, you don't just. You don't just show up and say we want to cover up this area, so we're calling it a wildlife refuge. There, there's zero. There's zero signs that, they, that can be seen that say do not go here. That is trespassing. We saw one sign that was under the Andalusia Bridge, the International Bridge, to go into Mexico. We saw the sign that says no trespassing, and guess what we did? We made a U-turn and didn't go that way because we followed the sign. But once we were down well, sure, there, that's the part of the, the federal river, facility. That that's yeah, part of the checkpoint. It's not but the freaking side point, of the river. Sorry, go ahead. But, but, but down by the river, there's no signs. But the game warden goes, well, we haven't really kept up the land, but they're hidden behind other trees now. But they're there, but you just couldn't see but them. But they I'm still charged going. you. They still charged you. Yeah, we, were, we had to pay a fine to get our guns back. They were taken from us. We were extorted. This is the same stuff you see in Mexico. When families are trying to travel around and the police pull them over and take all their possessions and say, you have to pay this to get well, it back. Okay, well, I, I, listen, listen. Uh, there was a fog of war and it said feds and then we knew locals were involved and then we kind of put in the article, Border Patrol and uh, now they were involved to a certain extent at the state police, but I have to apologize now. That happens in fast reporting news. I know I'm sure Don got it right and I'm sure... Uh, Mikhail Thalen around the article did, but we'll just make sure that it's the federal fish and wildlife just commandeered things. Now it makes perfect sense to you know keep reporters out of the area because because the border patrol is exposing what's going on, and so then 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 Obama controls the fish and wildlife the, people the a lot more. The border patrol guy watches our videos. Okay, well I gotta okay, well I don't make mistakes on purpose, but I, I that's why I blow up so bad. I'm like you're asking us to come down here, and you're whistleblowing to us, and then you're doing this to our people. But that's how I got the report last night. I guess early on, the reports were it was Border Patrol. Yeah, well, originally we were out there. The Border Patrol had no issue. The first night we got there, we were behind them as they were talking no, know, to these people from Honduras. Okay, well, then and they were fine. They said, walk past us. They didn't care. Sure, do me a favor yes, then. Sir. Get with Mikhail and them and just read over the article and then just make sure I got it all right and put a correction at the bottom. So I feel a lot better now. I was really blowing up earlier because I'm just like, you know, you like whistleblow to us and tell us come down here and then you're arresting us. Who are these traitors that were doing this? And now I understand that they had, they, they were feds in federal uniforms. It looks like Border Patrol, but now I understand what's going on. Wait, we how many agencies are down there, Joe? Four different entities govern that small piece of land. You have the Texas State Police, you have the Border Patrol, you have the local game wardens, and then you have the federal wildlife and fish people. Well, I also fish got confused because you did have the state police almost run you over yesterday and go crazy. Yes, I mean, it is ridiculous. The amount of money we are spending to harass reporters, but allow illegals to come through and drugs into our country. Why do you think Donald Trump's so passionate about closing the border down? There's no problem with legal immigration, but there's a hell of a lot of illegals coming over here that get treated better than I do. Sure. I freaking served my country. I shouldn't be treated like this. I shouldn't have my firearms taken away. I shouldn't be told I can't be there. That's my land. My tax dollars pay for it. That's state land. That's ridiculous. Well, I want to play this Trump clip where he talked about the video that you and, and Josh Owens got last year. Uh, just to illustrate, this is why they don't want reporters down there documenting things. And it's not just you. Other press has been harassed. And they tried to har harass the Border Patrol not to talk to the press, obviously. So this is what they don't want to see. Donald Trump playing our videos. Here it is. What happened? So while we're there, you probably read it. It was in Drudge, who's great, by the way. Drudge is amazing. But the story in Drudge, and big story, it's all over the place now. Guys swimming across, and big bags of stuff, drugs, swimming across the river, right? Swimming right across. And they put the drugs, and actually the camera crew, or the reporters, were petrified because they thought they were going to be killed. Because they're showing this on camera, the guys carrying bags of stuff, it was drugs. What happened to and then we've got the emergency manager saying that they bring him from the border and put him on buses and ship him wherever they want to go. I'm going to come back to Biggs and your calls after the break and also talk to some of the other reporters and get their take on what's happened. I'm going to come back to Dennis and then Dan and then Matt and Jim and Shendy and others. We do have a guest coming on. Let's get um, 
our next guest on about 20 after next hour, so I have time to cover this other news. As a backdrop, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have other stories like this one. This is from RT. Putin loses it, warns journalist of war. I don't know how to get through to you people. And explains that the West is basically starting a war with Russia. And, and by the way, that, that, that is a fact. Russia's not perfect, and I, I'm not, I've never been to Russia, and I don't have some stake in just saying this, but it's the truth. The West is starting all of this with Russia and funding radical jihadis to attack them, and it's a big deal. It's now time to realize the world is escalating into global crisis, and the people running our government are the ones trying to cause the global meltdown. They are the enemy. Well, I'll say this. Obama and his fish and wildlife goons down on the border arresting our reporters for just being on the side of a river, exposing the open border. You failed. DrudgeReport.com, top link, left-hand side. Fed arrest, feds arrest press for reporting on open borders. Government completing smuggling cycle for illegals. Obama joint effort with corporations can resettle refugees limitlessly. And we're putting together a very short compilation of Trump talking about our videos and the Border Patrol admitting the border is open and the emergency manager admitting it's open and they're ordered to let them in and the illegals pouring across as well as the Border Patrol saying we're ordered to complete the smuggling process. The video should be called, This Video Convicts Obama for Treason or This is Why Obama's Arresting the Press for Reporting on the Open Border. Because... Just like all these communists and people beating up Trump supporters makes Trump go up in the polls. <laughs> if, I, if other people would just go down to the border, it is crazy town down there. And you see the illegals come across, the Border Patrol puts them on a bus, takes them to another bus at a restaurant to get some food and just bye-bye, here's some money, bye-bye. We're not checking in for diseases, bye-bye. If that comes out, it's over for them. So now it makes sense when they said the feds arrested them. We're, we're, we're updating the article. We actually had it last night. It was in the, it was Fish and Wildlife signing to the Border Patrol. It's, it's, it's just crazy. And the state police almost ran the guys over, and they were involved too, but were nicer the next day. I, I, all Just please let us try to fix the country. Just please let us expose what's going on. Please, please just leave us alone. We're already risking our lives down there. I'm going to go back to Joe and your calls. I'm pushing Joel Gilbert back 20 minutes the next hour so we can get to your calls and have the other reporters pop in. But briefly, I haven't even plugged this hour we are running a special 20 to 40 percent off on the best storable foods out there at infowarsstore.com we can only do this a few times a year but because of all the craziness and, and all the you know deutsche bank melting down and all the crazy things that are happening and the elite buying armored redoubts and getting storable food it's smart for patriots to be self-sufficient and ready this is insurance you can eat now's the time to be prepared 20 to 40 percent off and the profit we do make helps fund the operation and what we're doing and can't you see the big effect infowars is having thank you for your support, we just sell products we know you need that also help us fight the good fight for freedom. We also have 20% off our best-selling nutraceutical Survival Shield Nation Iodine X2, uh, but that is selling out. So I intend to have this go to Monday, this independence special, but the, the X2 may have to stop because I don't, uh, don't want to completely sell out of that. This will be about a month until we get more, so take advantage of that. Also, shortwave radios, 20% off. All the non-GMO heirlooms, super high-quality seeds, already great prices, 20% off, and a lot more. We've expanded the sale, not just extended it. Infowarsstore.com, Infowarslife.com takes you right to the nutraceuticals, right to the uh, supplements. And then you can also call toll-free, 888-253-3139, 888-253-3139. I want to thank you all for your support, building a true independent media operation that's fearless. Joe Biggs, we're going to break in about a minute and a half. I'm going to come back with some of the other crew. Uh, but just great job. Thanks for you know doing what you're doing. You wanted to go to the border again. You guys are maniacs. Uh, so great job again uh, exposing this. Resistance is victory. Other points as we go to break. Well, we were charged with a misdemeanor. And we were told that if we come back on federal property like that again, without written permission, without written consent by the government, that we would then be charged with a felony and have our firearms removed. So and they're just ridiculous. claiming just anywhere on the border, period, you just can't be there. I mean... I, I guess, I mean, because their own thing they said was if you pull back on Google and it's green, you can't be there. But when we did that on our phones, it wasn't green. So apparently they own all the land. But that's uh, not even true. They can't let illegals come across and commit felonies against the republic and dereliction of duty. And then like a spider claim that there's some sign back in the bushes. So we're going to give you a felon and boy. Well, I, I Bend over I and squeal like a piggy. Sorry. Well, 
I, I said I didn't see the sign. I didn't see the sign. Hillary Clinton said she didn't send classified emails, but she was let go, and I was given a misdemeanor. She's not even getting a misdemeanor. That's where the problem is. Well, it's a load of horse crap, and we have to fight this now. I understand they made you do a, you know, take to get your firearms back, but we got to sue them now. doesn't matter anymore it goes. We just have to dra haul their ass in court, put those little beady-eyed commies up on the stand or whatever they are politically. I don't know what they are. They're just kind of weirdo minion of evil. I, I don't know. What's your opinion on that? Idiots, brain-dead morons, uh, collaborators. We'll be back. Uh, your calls are coming up in the next segment. Dennis and uh, Dan and Matt and Jim. And I'm going to get to all of you. Then we have other guests coming on. But uh, we're talking to Allie. We're not going to say her last name. One of our crew members, one of our camera people. Um, because obviously it's dangerous down there at the border. i tell you, it, it, what's really dangerous is trying to engage in the First Amendment. Allie, what was this like? I mean, this is we go down to the border pretty much every week with some of our crew. I guess your first time down there. Uh, and then all this important news you were gathering and you were operating as an interpreter with a lot of the folks, and the Border Patrol's meeting with you, giving you info, and then here comes Obama's Fish and Wildlife people to grab you and kidnap you guys. What was this like? Well, Alex, it was uh, very new to me, for sure. I usually come down to McAllen and do some shopping with my family or something. Super simple. I've never been in the front line, so this was a great experience for me, personally, being Mexican and looking at everything that's happening in the border. So when we first got here to McAllen and we first talked to those uh, um, people who were crossing the border, the Honduran uh, people, and uh, they told us that they just crossed and they seemed uh, scared and something really hap bad happened and stuff. So when I was talking to them in Spanish, they didn't seem like worried that we were there or anything. So that really surprised me first because when they talk about crossing the border, it's always like super dangerous and stuff like that. But I can imagine uh, what they went through before, but coming into him and then just walking in and being picked up by the Border Patrol it just seemed like they had it easy. And me, I work hard to get to where I am. I'm legally here and everything. And it, I don't know, it's just very surprising. And then the next day, obviously you wanna get more information and take more B-roll and talk to more people. Uh, and we get surprised by this uh, attack that Joe Vicks was uh, talking about. And I, at first, I. I feel safe when I'm around with Michael Zimmerman and Joe Biggs. They're, they know what they're doing. They've been out on the field. They love what they do. And I felt 100% safe with them. So I had no worries that when these people came in and started telling us to put our hands up in the air, I was not afraid. I kept calm, relaxed, because the worst thing you can do is obviously confront them. And they well, can sure, you're not in the wrong. They're the ones that are going to get in trouble now. And, and you know, it's a great point. You are have been a college student in RTF. You're you're from Mexico. We just hire folks that are smart and hardworking. We love you. Been here you know a while, a couple of years, and you know she so she's a great asset to Infowars. They make it so hard for you because we got to jump through some hoops to have people legally that are good, hardworking, smart people here. But then if you just want to wander in from China or Honduras or 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 if, you know Islamabad or wherever, you just come on in and we load you on a bus and you're into the country. They want to just it's just crazy. Why do you think they're doing that? Um, you mean the people uh, who are crossing well, I mean, the border? I mean, Obama, the globalist. Uh, what is the point of making it hard to come here legal, but then just open it up for people that are illegal? It's crazy. I feel like when uh, when you're smart or where, when you do the, the things, uh, when you do it right and you go through the protocols to have a visa and stay here in the country, you are under watch. And when people come in illegally, they I feel like they overflow people and uh, they don't know what to do with them. And and Mexicans or Hondurans or uh, illegal aliens come in and they know that they have it good. They don't have to worry about being looked at for five years or they don't have their names on a list being watched. Or, and that's what I feel like is going on right now. It's like I, eyes are on me. I, that's right, because I you're here legally and, and our crew are citizens here legally. Mm -hmm. You're being treated like crap because you comply. Exactly. And it's not fair because I'm going to get repercussions like being deported and not being allowed back in the States for 10 years if I do something wrong. Yet these people are getting in treatment like. Well, Allie, you know, if they throw you out of the country now, I said I'll just hire you and come in illegally. I'm actually kind of getting <laughs> to that point. I may go to Mexico, come back in illegally so I can be left alone. I'm serious. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm, I'm getting sick of being a citizen at some certain point. I already asked a couple of people if they would marry me to get me the green card. So. <laughs> well, I mean, if, if being a citizen so means easier. you have no rights, I mean, you know, hell, I'm yeah. going to...
Problem is, Mexico won't let me come down there and be a citizen, I guess. All right, Allie. Well, we're great job. Be safe. I want to get you back Thank up you. here and out of the line of fire, but you're an awesome uh, member of the crew and uh, just does so much great work behind the scenes every day. Great to have her down there. We're going to come back. It's everyone to pop in, and then your phone calls uh, straight ahead. I'm Alex Jones. This is the GCN Radio Network. Um, it's, it's real media, folks. We're really doing it. Now, I'm kind of an obsessed with the open border and the persecution of the press and the government being above the law and picking and choosing what it wants to do. But that's that's thematic of everything we're facing with Hillary and, and all the rest of it. Joel Gilbert's coming on. We're going to look at all these Islamic connections and him going to mosque and being in Islamic schools. It's finally breaking uh, in the news today, dealing with Obama and the Islamification uh, of the West. But there's a new story by Kit Daniels up on Infowars.com. Hillary faces perjury. Criminal probe, Hillary faces criminal perjury probe for lying about emails to Congress. And that's a big deal. We'll be talking some about that. I want to go to some of your phone calls for folks that have been holding about our reporters getting arrested, charged with trespassing for just being by the border, showing illegals coming across. The feds have some random signs somewhere saying federal land. So just you know, citizens can't be there, only illegals. And then we looked into the area. It's, it's all just made up. It's, it's, it's all just, just, just ridiculous. But it's all part of this imperious uh, system that we're dealing with. But separate from all this, in the economy and so many other areas, the whole world is just shaking right now. Uh, Putin's saying they're on the edge of war with the West and, and warning the press to wake up. I mean, it's, it's just getting crazier and crazier. Uh, Michael Zimmerman, I'm going to let you get out of here. We're going to take some phone calls here. You can ride shotgun with us. But uh, overall, what was this experience uh, like for you, uh, recapping things with all these bizarre Keystone cops uh, coming and, you know, arresting you because you were, I, I mean, I know you, some of this is on video. You're like, we're the press. Leave us alone. Right. I mean, uh, and, and they just seem to think that means you're the worst people on earth. Right. So I, I was here uh, last week with Jakar Jackson and Adon Salazar, and we ran into similar issues then. And we're basically chased off by these, these game wardens that came up in, in boats. And uh, we've got footage of that. So they came up in boats and, you know, walked up on the land to where we were. And they're asking, you know, what are you doing here? And we said, well, we're journalists. And, you know, Border Patrol suggested this is an area for us to come to our story and, and to cover. So these guys detained us last week for about only 10, 15 minutes until they could confirm that uh, we were allowed to be in this area. And they said, oh, this is a refuge and, you know, you can't be here. But uh, like you were saying, you look at Google Maps, you look at, you know, any of these other. No, they just cook it up. They got to have fences and signs. Well, yeah. You know. the, the one website after about 20, 30 minutes of looking online, if you go deep into the U.S. Fish and Wildlife website and, you know, turn on the right little filter on the map, you can see that they've defined this area as a wildlife refuge. But there's no signs there. There's there's nothing. And Obama has defined <laughs> Obama has defined uh, that he can just open the borders up because he's God. Right. Well, the uh, the people illegally crossing the border aren't fined two hundred and thirty dollars apiece for trespassing. They're given bus vouchers. So it it, it definitely seems uh, unfair for press to be fined for being there. So they ran all of our IDs, and my name came up because they ran our IDs last week, and they said, "Mr. Zimmerman, you were here a week ago. You were told that this is a, a an area you can't go to, and that's why we spoke to state police yesterday to confirm." That and they said you could be there. Place Absolutely, yeah. We've got that on tape. That'll be in our report. That they said this is public land. You can be here. So you've got too many cooks here. You have four different government agencies: two state, two federal. Yeah, but and it's always fish and wildlife. That's the real henchman. You know they've been under the orders. Keep the press out. That's a conduit where the illegals are told to go. They're covering for it, and yep. uh, we need to show they them. They do not want people to see what's going on there. They they don't want journalists to be able to get in there. Uh, you know, this actually look, was. Look, a, look, look, I know women can be trained and are great with firearms and all the rest of it, but I don't know why there's the, the, the archetype or the, or, the, or the cliche or the stereotype of the weird Janet Reno style woman that doesn't know how to use a gun. I mean, those women look like absolute morons. Yeah, th this was a simple uh, retention holster like police themselves carry. You know, it has a little button on the side that you press in order to draw the firearm so someone can't walk up behind you and, you know, jerk the gun out of your belt which is basically what the, she tried to end up doing. She got two hands on it, and she's pulling on the gun. I was like, you need to press the button there to, to be able to do that. So, yeah, these, these people just have no clue. They are you morons. Know, It'll follow yeah. the rules. Well, the Border Patrol overall are doing a great job, and they've been giving us great tips. And Absolutely. I, I know that you got messed with by some of them and by some state police. That got all mixed together with this, but this was the Fish and Wildlife idiots, so I apologize. Yeah, it, it's fed. Some of my freak out the first hour, but I, now it's directed at these people. So, um, 
Well, so. I tell you, time is on our side, Zimmerman. I don't see how they're going to get away with all this. I mean, this is crazy. Yeah, they can't. People are waking up to this, you know, top red link on Drudge right now. This story is getting out there. And them acting like this is only going to make it worse. Uh, so let me give them a little news flash. You're in violation of the First Amendment. I don't care if you and Obama claim you own everything and you're God. You can bring the illegals in and give them everything free. You are not God, and you're going to learn that. You're under the law as well. Uh, Yesterday, they suppressed our First and Second Amendment rights, freedom of the press, and, you know, they took our firearms and demanded money in order to give it back. And he, he made it sound like, oh, I'm, I'm doing you a favor. I'll make it convenient for you. We can drive up the road to where you get cell signal, signal again. You can pay your $690 in fines, and I'll give you your guns back right now. Otherwise, they're going to be going to a federal armory and getting locked up there until you pay your fine. Then you can go claim it. So it was... In order to get us to not fight this in court and drag this out months and have our firearms sure, they wanted armory, to we had make to it right you agree that you were trespassing. You can't Absolutely. do that. You, yeah. you got to appeal it. You didn't understand it. We got to sue them. And by the way, we Absolutely. sued. We sued with doing one in. in uh, I think that was in Cleveland last time. So, whatever. I mean, I don't want to have to do it, but we've got to stand up for you guys. So, let's do the research. Let's get the lawyers and let's file the lawsuits with these with these with these goons. That's what they want. It's what they get. We're not looking for trouble, but they, they're looking for it. They came to the right place. Uh, Michael, let's take some calls. Dennis in Texas, you held over real quick. You were getting into what it was like working for decades under Sharia law in the Middle East and uh, what we see here with the, Lama, with the Islamification. Well, I've got a, a quick headline for you. Fed use, feds use color of law to muzzle press. Yeah, feds, feds arrest Feds arrest press. I mean, it's what it's the headline Drudge has. You know, feds arrest press to stop them reporting on open border. Yep, they're using the color of law against you. And this is the fourth estate. This is this is what is supposed to ensure that we have a responsive government, a government that is for for the people, that uh, actually uh, enhances our freedoms, uh, a government that cannot work in the shadows. These people want to work in the shadows. Um, you guys have done a great job um, highlighting what's going on down in the border, but you you actually need help. And then this, you, you're doing the tactical things, but there needs to be a strategic thing done. Um, unfortunately, most people in the United States do not understand that Muslims are not, there, there are only two types of Muslims. There are um, radical Muslims and there are more radical Muslims. Okay, there are no moderate Muslims. Um, you you can what what you what we should do is get a a conference of churches and Muslim leaders together and hold a big prayer meeting to pray for peace and a pray pray against terrorism. You will find that the Muslims will not pray with a Christian. It isn't going to happen. Well, okay. I know this: the Muslims that aren't radical are the heretics. They're the ones that are off the reservation. And the most, and the more radical ones bully all the others into submission. And I just find it very offensive to have Muslim teaching in the public schools to accept Islam. That's in the news today. Muslim camps at the schools, and they have a woman come in with earrings and her face out, telling us how great Islam is to sell it to the dumb leftists. I mean, it is total Trojan horse BS, and I'm sick of it. Thank you, Dennis, for your points. Uh, let's go ahead, and I'll tell you, everyone, we'll go back to calls. A reporter on the border. They don't want you catching the Islamics coming across because we've got their reports. I'm not talking about the Border Patrol. I'm talking about Obama. They don't want you down there because they know you're going to end up catching some Islamics, and then it's really going to be a huge story. Right. Well, and this whole thing about moderate Islam is a myth. You know, they say only 5% of Muslims are, are radical. But if you look at, you know, the surveys and, you know, research out there, they ask questions to these people like, you know, do you think gays should be thrown off buildings? Or do you think Sharia law should be the 25% say the they should kill everybody. I mean, this is it's crazy. It's huge. It's like 60 70%, 25% when we went to Paris. You know, 25% of Muslims in Paris support. And whole know, areas, they would run you out. They just wouldn't give you service. Absolutely. Just, just get out of here. Yeah, there, there aren't moderates. Well, incredible, Zimmerman. Let's uh, go ahead and take some more calls here. Uh, let's talk to Cindy and PA, then Matt and Dan and Jim. Uh, we're going to skip this network break. I can't help it. I just have to do it. Uh, free speech is under attack. We have to sacrifice here. Cindy, go ahead. 
Yeah, hi, Alex. This really is turning into Helder Skelter here. Um, people may not understand Muslims, so I think more attention needs to be drawn on the contagious disease factor. If Trump would talk more about the contagious diseases they're spreading to all of us and how endangered and we are. And by the way, this is a big deal. All these weird diseases that are in the third world are suddenly here. TB's exploding. It's killing people. Much of it's drug resistant. And they're just like, it doesn't matter. Ah, yay. You know, oh, take your vaccines, be safe. But then there's nothing for TB. That's a great point. What do you think's behind that? Uh, the cost, you know, killing us. I think they want us to die. But, I, you know, it might be a thought for you to put out some surgical masks with InfoWars written on it. Oh. We could wear them. Oh, yeah, tell your uh, kids like, to wear it as a, as a statement. I, I, I appreciate your call. Look. All I know is they haven't taken one refugee in Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia is the one starting the civil war and destabilizing everything. And I don't think they want us all just to die immediately. But the globalists do want societal collapse because they organize it and then they get funding out of it by being the managers. Why do you think they're doing this, Michael Zimmerman? Well, it's the, it's the slow kill and push through the depopulation. They don't care if people with TB and scabies are coming into the U.S. They don't care if people here get sick. You know, Chris Cabrera, the Border Patrol Union vice president down here that we spoke to last week, was telling us that the quarantine areas in these uh, refugee centers, or I forget exactly what they call it down here, the quarantine area is just a little piece of yellow tape. So the people who are sick go over here, the well people go over here. There's no, there's no isolation or separation. So people could be going to these places before they get sent on buses across the country, and they're all getting TB and scabies. Well, there are a lot of people getting getting now in public schools directly from the migrants, not the illegals. Uh, and it's time for lawsuits to draw attention to this. You know, what stopped the secret blood draws going into a U.N. database was a nurse blew the whistle to myself like in 1997. People heard about it, looked into it, found out it was true. Lawsuits were filed in Texas and Minnesota. And, 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 and now they have to disclose, okay, it's a DNA database. Uh, so it, it just this stuff must be exposed. Michael Zimmerman, thank you so much. We really appreciate you. And... Uh, I guess you guys are coming back today. Uh, yes. I, I mean, I guess, uh, you know, specifically, uh, you might want to go file a report just from the edge of where they claim that there's no free speech. And then, of course, they'll just move it further, the goalpost. Uh, right. Truly, truly a nightmare scenario for the First Amendment. But whatever you do, just follow those reports and get back to Austin safe. Will do. Thank you, Alex. That's a great crew. I, I, I sent Jakari and them down there a few weeks ago. I didn't even send the crew down there this time. I just They said there's a lot of news down there. We want to go cover it, and uh, there they are. Uh, wow. We're about to uh, get our next guest, Joel Gilbert, on here in a moment to get into uh, Obama's real past. It's now hitting mainstream news. Before we do that, let's talk to Matt in Michigan. Matt, thanks for calling in. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. What's going on? Hey, um, I'm from Nebraska. Uh, a couple of things. Uh I thought you were kind of throwing BS out there until a lot of stuff has happened that you reported on, like the sets of people and all that. So I'm having topics, trouble understanding you. Are you on a speakerphone? I'm on a headset. All right, just try to get a little bit closer to the mic because I'm really having trouble. All right. Is that better? Yeah, that's, that's night and day, yeah. Okay. Um, I thought you were a bunch of BS before, but uh, I had trouble with census people and all that. They did exactly what you guys reported. And since your guest left, I kind of glad that he got his guns back and all that because down there in Mexico with the Fast and Furious, they could have set him up on the gun crime and all that and then had gun, more gun control uh, politics going, going to play. Well, listen, I wish that I was exaggerating. I mean, I can't believe how crazy stuff is. I, I can't believe they brought 5 million jihadis into Europe and it's got to be a million or something here. They're covering it up. I mean, I don't want to believe this. I appreciate your call, Matt. Uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's bizarro. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Jim in North Carolina. You're on the air worldwide. Go ahead, Jim. Hey, this has been an exciting news week, ain't it? A lot going on. Um, Never boring. Obama is organizing is top mega banks to finance and bring in unlimited Muslim immigrants, giving them work visas. I mean, I you can't make that up. I originally didn't call in to talk about the banks in Mexico, but since you asked it and nobody answered it, I think I'll go ahead and tell you. Um, Obama gets to print money off these uh, illegals coming in. And as far no, as. No, that's Obama, true. They get to throw them into the Social Security system and leverage them with the IMF and World Bank. E each one of us is, 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 is a commodity. So, so, yes, they're using these poor people as well. They're playing us off against each other. 
problems, he gets more. The proof we have of that is Tony Blair coming out and admitting the whole weapons of mass destruction was his mess up fiasco. And as soon as he did that, the pound hit a historic low. But yet their markets pretty much stayed the same. So there's the proof in that. But what I really called in about was this emergency hearing they had with old, uh, James Comey. And he basically come out and said that federal federal officials are not held to the same standards, meaning the letter of the law. In order for them people to be convicted, there has to be irrefutable proof. And no, that that's right. He's setting a new precedent for a new uh, imperial royalty that is the federal government. And uh, But the little people, you've got to follow these laws, but uh, nobody else does. Great point, Jim. I'll get to more of your calls. Barbara, Terry, Chris, HB, and others. Coming up, the toll-free number to join us on this Thursday edition is 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. I'm your host, Alex Jones, and we're going to be covering the RNC. I'll be there. We're going to have reporters as well at the DNC. We're going to have reporters on the border. Uh, I'm going to go back down to the border here after I get back from the RNC. <clears throat> but it's more important than ever to understand that Infowars.com is breaking through the electronic Berlin Wall of globalist disinformation. We're forcing stories into the open consciousness of the public. Thanks to DrudgeReport.com, but also thanks to our over 170 AM and FM affiliates, TV affiliates, cable affiliates, you the listeners, number one, spreading the articles, the videos to Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. You're the reason we're having a giant effect. And I want to thank you all for what you've been doing and ask you to intensify it because we're all in this together. This is a historic battle. The globalists are out in the open. People are ready to wake up. This is, this is the best of times, worst of times. I also want to thank you for your financial support. Um, when you buy a Hillary for President shirt, that helps fund this operation, our reporters, writers, team, nightly news, you name it. But right now, all the proceeds are going to pay for aircraft at the DNC and RNC with giant banners saying Hillary for President. We're just going to keep hammering the point that she's a criminal. Also, we have the Independence Day mega sale ending next Monday. Some things are going to have to end before then, like Survival Shield, Nason I, uh, X2, and some of the other nutraceuticals. Some of those are going to sell out beforehand. But the super high-quality storable food, 20 to 40% off, one of the biggest sales ever, will extend through Monday. Infowarsstore.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Uh, but X2 is selling out, so take advantage of that. But whatever you do, visit InfoWarsStore.com because we've got independent specials from July 4th right, right through next Monday that deal with non-GMO heirloom seeds, open-pollinated, super high-quality water filtration systems. They're massively discounted. So many great things. Shortwave, crank power, radios, you name it. Solar-powered radios, solar-powered systems, they're all discounted so much, I can't get into it all. And your purchase is getting high-quality products at very low prices. Make everything we do here possible. Infowarsstore.com. Okay. I got up this morning, and I went, as I do every morning, to Infowars.com for about 10 minutes. Then I went over to DrudgeReport.com for about 30 minutes. Then I went back to Infowars.com for about 20 minutes. I kind of, you know, kind of go back and forth. And then I got into my email, I was reading some stuff, and I went back to Drudge, and I saw, boom, this big image of uh, Obama in his Islamic garb. Now, when we first saw that in 2003, the media said it was fake. They had truth squads that said, we'll arrest you uh, in places like Missouri if you say that he isn't a Christian. They actually, I, I mean, I can play those newscasts. I'm not kidding. Maybe we should pull those up. Well, it turns out he went to madrasa schools. He was a Muslim. He speaks better Arabic than top imams. Joel Gilbert has made the definitive film, Dreams of My Real Father, on this subject. He's really investigated Obama like nobody else. So there are major Islamic connections to kind of his fake family in Kenya and the rest of it. But I wanted to ask him what he really thinks Obama's end game is. But, but then separately, we're going to break in a moment. I kind of want him to j j just give us a preview. Does he think it's really good news, though, that finally Bill O'Reilly's talking about this and giving us old news and making it new? I mean, is that a positive thing? What does he think that bodes? Uh, so is he really just a globalist socialist allied with Islam, or is he double-dipping? Is he really a Islamicist? Uh, Joel Gilbert, documentary filmmaker, researcher, from your deep research on Obama and all these new photos emerging, who is he really? 
Hi, Alex. Uh, look, uh, Barack Obama, at his core, is a radical communist. You have to understand the uh, connection between Islamists and Marxists. Uh, they both view Western free market systems, free speech, and open government as an obstacle to taking power. Therefore, Islamists and Marxists are natural allies, uh, and they see Western society as the number one target on the path to salvation. Salvation for Marxists is utopia, paradise on earth, like in my, in my new film. Salvation for Islamists is in, is in the next world. But together, they view Western society as their number one target. And you can see Obama again and again, always very comfortable around Islam. Any anti-American ideology, anti-American extremist, Reverend Wright, Bill Ayers, you can see him wearing the Islamic garb. He is extremely comfortable and happy in any anti-American setting or with any anti-American like Raul Castro, uh, Chavez. Anyone who hates America, he's very comfortable because this is his background. His real father, Frank Marshall Davis, was a Soviet agent and a Communist Party USA propagandist. And this is the man who raised him and became his ideological father, as I've chronicled in my film, Dreams for My Real Father. Uh, so uh, this is who Obama is. He, he's uh, part of this world of little known world of anti-American radical Marxists and the Islamists are their natural allies. Obama is uncomfortable when you see him placing the American flag on the tomb of the unknown soldier at a, any ceremony that has to do with uh, memorializing the founding fathers. He's always uncomfortable. So this is the big lie that Obama hoisted on us and the Democrats in 2000. All right, I wanna ask you where you think he's going in his last months in office through next January. Where do you think the election's going with Hillary and a lot more Joel Gilbert? We're on the mark. Hey. Hillary Clinton will say anything to get elected. Now she's making false attacks on Barack Obama. The Washington Post says Clinton isn't telling the truth. She championed NAFTA, even though it has cost South Carolina thousands of jobs. And worst of all, it was Hillary Clinton who voted for George Bush's war in Iraq. That's what Obama had. Hillary Clinton. She'll say anything and change nothing. It's time to turn the page. Paid for by Obama for America. I'm Barack Obama, candidate for president, and I approve this message. I have run my last campaign. This is him now this week. I couldn't be prouder of the things we've done together, but I'm ready to pass the baton. And I know that Hillary Clinton is going to take it. And of course, Trump has been exposing this hypocrisy. Can win that race. The race to create good jobs and better schools and safer streets and a safer world. And that's why I'm fired up. And that's why I'm ready to go. And that's why I'm with her. And that's why I need you to work just as hard to make sure that Hillary Rodham Clinton is the next president of the United States of America. God bless you, North Carolina. They want to keep her in there to cover for all his crimes he's committed and continue the agenda. And now we've got Donald Trump as the nominee, whether you love him or hate him. I think the guy has got a lot of courage and is a great patriot. I know he's a listener of the show. I know he's getting more hardcore all the time. They're trying this anti-Semitism BS when our government under Hillary and Obama has been funding Al-Qaeda and ISIS. Talk about anti-Semitic. And then now they can show Disney, you know, uh, ads and stuff with the same little star, meaning a discount. And they're saying, oh, it's, it's anti-Semitic because he bashed Hillary with it. And I, and I like Trump coming out, we're going to play this later, saying we shouldn't have retracted that. My crew shouldn't have done that. Uh, I mean, I just love how they use calls of racism all day when these are the people pushing racial division and all of this control. So Joel Gilbert, documentary filmmaker, very intelligent political activist, a guy that dug up incredible dirt on Obama. I want to talk with you about this election, where you see it going, how it ties in with Hillary, because you're a guy that has you know, some gravitas. I mean, I really actually want to know your opinion uh, about, I know the audience does too, just wargaming this myself every day. What does your gut tell you? Where do you think Hillary will take us? What is Obama going to do in his last months? The arrogance where the Supreme Court says, yeah, it's illegal for you to violate the law and let illegals in. He just says, I'm going to increase it even bigger. Uh, and, and, then, and then the FBI coming out and not going after Hillary um, admitting all the horrible things she's done, but then saying we can't go after her. 
What do you really think is happening? I mean, how do we decipher and decode all this, Joel Gilbert? Okay, Alex. Well, uh, first of all, I don't think people, except for maybe you and your listeners, understand the seriousness of the times we're living in. We're literally, I believe, in the last days of the republic yes. before liberal fascism takes a permanent hold if Hillary wins. We're one justice away on the Supreme Court. You'll probably have three or four that will negate several of our uh, freedoms and, and amendments. Uh, the FEC, you remember that uh, the FEC tried to uh, go after me, investigate me, uh, find me possibly a jail sentence for making a movie about Obama's past, and it was tied three to three. Should have been six to nothing, but it was three to three. So they just need one more uh, liberal. Official FEC Democratic committee. Party platform uh, in Philadelphia will be to arrest climate change deniers. Correct. So the, the liberal fascism that uh, might be in our future uh, is extremely serious. We have uh, Barack Obama. Uh, he's going to act as an agitator. He is a professional agitator. He trained as an agitator in Chicago with the Midwest Academy, with the radical Marxists. He was a trainer for ACORN. And he never was really interested in politics as much as he was in using politics in the office of the presidency to agitate, meaning to divide the country, to spread disinformation. Uh, the top 1% of the people are preventing you from uh, from from being successful. All so they're licking Marxist, their lips or making their big move. All these Marxist lies. So you saw Obama in the speech with Hillary. Uh, he also talked about that unemployment is only 4%. We have tremendous job growth. Uh, we're now safer because of his policy. So we have record crime rate, global destabilization, never before seen, all top analysts admit, we're really in a depression. But just like the Soviet Union in 1989, was still claiming it was doing great. Correct. Everything is a lie. It's Soviet era disinformation, disinformatia. And this is what Obama will be doing over the next several months with the Democrats and the media to simply echo these, uh, these lies. And if you look at Venezuela as a new modern example of how the lies of the economy doing great and security and safety all come crashing down all of a sudden. People realize there's no jobs, there's no food, there's no health care, and the entire society uh, is, is being torn apart. So this idea of this, you know, utopian ideal has been proven to be a disaster again and again. But it gives uh, them total power and control, so they like it. Correct. Don't uh, they know it's a fraud, though? I mean, they've got to be intellectual enough. I know a lot of the top globalists are billionaires that are using this to consolidate power, and then they're exempt from an offshore, and then it destroys their competition, getting rid of a free market. As John D. Rockefeller said, competition is a sin. But, but used to, I disagree with you to a certain extent, and Dr. Corsi and others, that it was real communist ideology. I thought they were just using it, but now that I've dug deeper and gotten to know people that know them and actually been around some of it, they don't get the oxymoron that they're on a jumbo jet with a red carpet and he's worth $100 million or whatever, or Hillary's worth $200 million or $300 million, and that then they're criticizing free market that gave us all these choices and all this freedom and, and, this, and this huge... I mean, so they really are communists. It's, it's bizarre. Look, their goal is to eliminate the middle class and create one big lower class. And then these bureaucrats become the upper class, the bourgeois. They take control of all the assets of the state. So are they consciously blood drinking parasites or do they really believe they're on BS? Uh, I think they're consciously uh, drug, you know, drug sniffing parasites. Uh, there's no question that they, they know this entire thing is bunk. But they, they're, they're people that are being used by others. It's a very sad story. Obama's real father, Frank Marshall Davis, was one of the original black Bolsheviks in Chicago. White communists used him and convinced him that if he would join their party, gets all these perks, and try to convince other black people to join the socialist movement. Fast forward And by to the way, for, for, for new listeners, yeah. my, my mom heard you like five, five years ago or whatever when your film first came out, and she was like, this is crazy. She saw it, totally convinced. It's, it's total open and shut. We sell the film, Drew's My Real Father. You have it at your website. Every, if you haven't seen it, folks, you're insane if you haven't. It is so mind-blowing. That's why they always said in Harvard Review that he did for years, you know, I was born in Kenya, I'm Kenyan. It's why she said in speeches, I'm from Kenya. It's why uh, they would uh, put out, you know, a birth certificate in six layers that's fake on purpose that a 10-year-old could figure out to bait us to think it was... That's why he doesn't look like his supposed relatives. It's all a cutout, and it is Frank Marshall Davis, who he had... Mitz in his book was his grandfather's best friend, who he lived with in Summers, who's probably the most famous black communist ever, and who, and then he's pornos with his mother. It's it's all documented. I 
it's some of the greatest journalism I've ever seen. I, I don't mean to digress, but but that snapshot a few minutes for new people because we have new audiences all the time that don't know who Obama's real dad is because it, it's open and shut. I mean, this okay, is his Obama daddy. This is his daddy. Yeah, Obama's real dad was a black Bolshevik in Chicago. He was ordered to Hawaii by the Kremlin to act as a Soviet agent in 1948 after being a member of the Communist Party for 14 years to help organize the Hawaiian dock workers to strike and take over the Hawaiian government. This is before the state to expel U.S. naval forces from Hawaii because the Russians felt the U.S. naval forces were an obstacle to Soviet expansion in Asia. Frank Marshall Davis went to Hawaii, organized the strikes for six months. It ultimately failed, and Davis stayed in Hawaii, tried to recruit the NAACP there to join the Communist Party, uh, and was investigated by the FBI, a 600-page FBI file, and was on the security index A, meaning he'd be arrested immediately if there was a conflict with the Soviet Union. He became a writer and propagandist for the Communist Party newspapers for many years. Uh, so this is the guy that I think I have a mountain of evidence was the real biological father who more importantly became Obama's ideological mentor and radicalized him into this anti-white, anti-American ideology. Uh, but regardless, Obama, it's who his dad sent him to stay summers with. Oh, not summers. He would spend three hours, a day, three hours a day. And by the way, within a couple of days, I'm going to be dropping a new article with uh, Jerry Corsi with WND. I became very close to one of Obama's high school friends who is prominently featured in Dreams from My Father. We're going to have a whole new group of revelations about Frank Marshall Davis and the paternity coming up within a day or two, and I'll be happy to come back on. Wow, please do. Uh, so that's going to come out. But the I just thought of you because all the, you know, all the photos and stuff that you and others helped get on the Islamic end of him all dressed up. Remember them nine years ago saying those were fake? Now they just admit they're real. Right. They, they had, look, uh, Unfortunately, O'Reilly and his gang and mainstream media, even the conservatives, have really let us down, except for you, Alex, because we had all this information years ago, and they're suddenly realizing, well, maybe this guy is a radical communist with Islamic sympathies, something we've been saying for years. Uh, anyway, Frank Marshall Davis, the radical anti-American, anti-white extremist, uh, died in 1985. Lo and behold, Barack Obama latches on to Reverend Wright, who's kind of the same person. He calls him an uncle. But that was his new father figure, and Obama is comfortable with anti-American extremists and uncomfortable with anything American. And this was the big lie. He ran as a mainstream candidate pretending to love America when really he threw his voters under the bus and pursued a radical... Sure, well, I'm anti-American until I study every other country, and it's the best. I mean, <laughs> it's real easy to be an anti-American if you're some snot-nosed college student never done anything in your life. Right, well... Uh, this is this is the very sad uh, episode that America was uh, duped into by the media and by Obama, and we're suffering the consequences. I think Obama's going to try in the last months of his of his presidency to uh, continue the radical transformation by flooding us with illegals, by uh, not even caring that these uh, illegals had not been screened for security or medical background. Or well, Joel, that's what gets me. That that's why I've gone from thinking. Total open martial law, persecution was a possibility to a probability to a near certainty is I've never seen in history such brazen corruption, such foaming at the mouth evil, such such uh, sabotaging the economy. Just they run it. They've taken us over. That's not enough. They really want to mount our head on the wall. Just they really want to blow the engine of free market. Even though they've captured it, it is the most, it'd be like if you took over a mansion, you go, well, I don't like who lived here before, I'm going to burn it down. It's yours. I don't understand why they're against prosperity. I don't get, I don't understand it. Like George Soros, a Nazi collaborator, 60-something years, running around trying to blow up free countries still, financing groups that openly are trying to train to kill police for no reason. It's like... If you're 89 years old, why do you want to finance groups to kill cops? I just, I don't understand these people. These people have a destructive passion. It's no different from the Islamist jihadists who have a passion to destroy. The radical leftists and Marxists have a destructive passion. They cannot take it, and it makes them miserable when they see people using free speech, uh, Second Amendment they can't rights. take our real liberal freedom, that everybody can do whatever they want, the money, all the choices. They, they hate it, exactly. They can't compete with freedom. Right. Their, their ideology is that only a government control of everything and everyone 
is the uh, utopian ideal, the utopian society. So when you prove to them that people can be free and productive and go to church and have a job and, and be happy without their Marxist nonsense, it infuriates them and they have to destroy it. Uh, that's why they have so much in common with the Islamists yeah. who want to destroy the free I agree. Marxist. Another place where I was wrong, and I've not been wrong on a lot of big stuff in history, but I heard from you and others 10 years ago that it's an Islamic takeover plan. They're going to flood Europe. It, it's Sharia law, the caliphate. And I knew they were thinking that, but I thought, good luck. They'll let a few of you attack and then use that as an excuse to take our rights, but, you know, kill you. No, it really seems like they're actually putting them in charge everywhere, making us conform, and really trying to override us with Islam. That is, a, uh, that is freakazoid. I mean, I don't, how well, is that? Use, look, they use uh, poor people to put them at the forefront to, to demand that we uh, change the welfare system and give free health care. They use uh, Isla Muslims. They use uh, El Salvadorans and Mexicans. They'll put anybody up front to use them as a battering ram to, to knock down traditional free market society. And I made the analogy earlier about Frank Marshall Davis. He was used by white communists in Chicago to become part of the communist movement. Fast forward 1985, Bill Ayers and his uh, Marxist terrorist gang uh, were using his father, Thomas That's right, Ayers. That's right, because historically you couldn't get any black people to join a communist movement. I mean, they were the most anti-communist group of anybody. The Marxists in Chicago were dying to get the black church groups involved in their causes because they were so well organized. They didn't want any part of it because communism was atheist. They brought in a front man with a black face, Barack Obama, out of New York to come into Chicago to join the Developing Communities Project to get in and infiltrate uh, the black churches. And you can see that Obama has done nothing for black people in, in all of his presidency. And since they went from being Christians, the, uh, black Americans, folks, had lower crime rates on average and lower illegitimacy rates than whites. Okay. Right. And now, look, as soon as their ideology became leftist garbage, culture annihilated. Same for everybody else. I mean, it's just pure proof. As soon right. as they had the communists run them, over. Right. So it's the ideology is to use people, to use black people, to use poor people, to stir their discontent, rub salt in their wounds, and I'm quoting, and then use their discontent to take power. They don't say, we want to take power to help people. They want to use them to take power. And then they discard them. In my film, There's No Place Like Utopia, I go to Southside Chicago, Detroit, we talked to all these African Americans who've been screwed by these uh, 50, 60 years of, of uh, leftist control of these cities. They have drug cultures, high crime rates, single mothers, poor education, flooded by immigrants. And they're like, when you talk to them, they're like people that came out of Russia in the 1950s. All of it's desperate. engineered. They're so ready for freedom. Well, that's what I was they're told right. by a big Hollywood producer last week. He said, he said, you know, like the black producers and people are the most awake folks in Hollywood now for free market but he, and, and, and freedom. But they go, the Hollywood can, won't let that out. And, then, and this is a big white producer. He's produced like, I mean, major TV shows and movies. And he was saying he's now working with a lot of these libertarian black folks. He was, he was mentioning major names, but he was saying the media will never let them get that information out. Correct. And let me circle back on the, uh, the photos in Obama's yes, opinion yes. for Islam. Because in my research... Uh, I have developed a case that Obama was not at, at uh, Columbia University for two years, as he claimed. He claimed to be their junior and senior years. I've got the proof that he was in Pakistan for his junior year abroad. He was an international studies major, and they all went on junior year abroad. His mother was in Pakistan at the time, and I believe Obama lived as an adult in a Muslim country, and that's where he got his affinity for all things Islam. And then he then went to Columbia on a Ford Foundation scholarship by the way, which would have been illegal because his mother worked for the Ford Foundation, and that was nepotism. And that's why Obama kept such a low profile at Columbia. Nobody saw him, met him. He didn't join any organizations because of the Ford Foundation connection, which uh, he So is he really a communist? Is he a radical Muslim? Or is it all a CIA cutout? Because you know, I mean, we know his whole family CIA. I believe Obama is a radical communist. He was raised and radicalized by radical communists. And this was an... And later in life, he discovered the connection and support that the Islamists would give for that cause. Uh, it's not uncommon in Europe and other uh, countries like uh, the Labor Party in England. Has no, no, Islam's always been for 80 years uh, w w with the communists. They also ally with the fascists as well. Anything right. totalitarian. Uh, we'll be back with Joel Gilbert. This guy knows his stuff, folks. We'll be back. Stay with us. Your calls as well.
The only time I'm wrong is when I underestimate how bad so-called progressives and liberals are. Because I know Republicans are corrupt and bad. They work for the very same special interest. They give us lip service on issues. They're terrible. But man, when you get to Obama and Hillary, and they really are out to get us. So we get recordings of them going, these bitter clingers, don't worry, I'll beat them. They have some score to settle. It's like a, they got to show us that they're going to you know, wreck the country and rebuild it in some horrible image. Joel Gilbert is a documentary filmmaker, joelgilbert.com. And, of course, you can link through there to his other websites and get both his films there. We, we saw both of them as well. They're excellent. Uh, please uh, support this broadcast. We have great nutraceuticals, great supplements. A lot of them with massive discounts right now. They're going to have to end very soon. Probably before the uh, extended July 4th Independence Week sale ends Monday, we'll have to pull X2, uh, nascent iodine, the good halogen, because that's going to sell out. But some of the other products, like the storable foods, are up to 40% off. Uh, huge specials. We also have 20% off shortwave radios, a giant selection of those. That's already a very low price, already super high quality. We have 20% off the already lowest price on the widest spectrum of non-GMO heirloom open pollinated seeds and so much more in the July 4th Independence Day mega sale that's extended and expanded with more items. So these are things you need and it supports the tip of the spear promoting really an emergency warning about what's happening historically. Uh, but even mainline analysts now admit the world is in the most conflict it's pretty much ever seen that things are melting down, things are deteriorating, the elites are digging in and getting armored redoubts, the Silicon Valley folks are evacuating to armored fortresses. Uh, they're really gearing up for something big, and I think it's time for everybody to get prepared because it's gone from the realm of possibility to the realm of virtual certainty, but uh, this collapse will not be evenly distributed, uh, so some areas won't be as affected as others, but we need to be prepared. Everything the globalists do is about Everything the collectivists do, the communists do, is about making us independent uh, uh, no more. They want to make us dependent on them. They want to make us basically domesticated slaves, sheep. I'm going to host some of the next hour with Rob Dew and take your phone calls for Chris and Ben and James and Terry and Kenny. We'll get to all of you. And I have some big news on Putin saying the world's gearing up for war and more. But let me turn back to Joel Gilbert in the few minutes we have in closing. Three minutes. Obviously, elites all over the world are digging in for something big. Is it economic collapse? Is it larger wars? Is it Islamic terror cells activating everywhere? Joel Gilbert, why do you think they're digging in and gearing up? Well, uh, first, uh, Obama and the leftists want a permanent state of agitation. If everything is peaceful and quiet and people are prosperous, they go away. They can't make uh, waves. They can't get elected. So by definition, they have to create chaos, problems, tension, anxiety, uh, bringing diseases into the country, people that might commit acts of terrorism that have committed acts of terrorism. Releasing criminals, dumbing everybody down, yeah. causing so racial strife. This is what they do. They agitate and divide in order to use that uh, division and insecurity to take power and say, look, it's the 1% who are doing this. It's the rich people. There's an evil boogeyman who's causing all this, give us the power. We'll but make there it is a boogeyman. It's the George Soros's and Rockefeller's and people funding the leftist revolution. It actually is the robber barons doing it. Correct. Absolutely correct. But they simply lie through their teeth. Everything they say is a lie. And they, they blame this uh, so-called unknown system or, uh, you know, conservatives or whatever it might be uh, to continue this narrative. Vast right-wing conspiracy. Right. So... It's really a vast left-wing conspiracy, as I show in my film. So people like uh, Donald Trump is, is getting all the support because he's the first person to really stand up and call them out as complete frauds, everything from the media to the Democrat Party to these globalists. And this is what's striking a chord that uh, we saw in Britain, how they voted sure, against Sure, I'll uh, do two more minutes with us, and I'm going right to Chris, a former Marine, wants to comment on the open border. But stay there. Back in two minutes before that, I want to ask you then, are we winning? Are they winning? Yeah, How do you I see this going? Today. How are they going to strike back? Joel Gilbert's our guest on Alex Jones. It's a long way to the top if you want to stop the globalist. Well, you can have corruption and capitalism, but it's something that can be contained and dealt with. And innovation will run away so crazily that the only problem with free market is you just get spoiled because you're so rich.
But communism creates living hell. And I get to hear all these idiot young people and old people, too, going, oh, the utopia of socialism. And I'm like, where does that work, dummies? And they just don't care. They, they just they drive up in their sports cars. They have their smartphones. It seems like so many rich white people are socialists and communists. And I, I, I just, I, I, are they guilty they have money? I, I don't understand it. Why don't they just build a company and hire people and build something? You know, help everybody by building a better civilization. Joel Gilbert, in closing, I appreciate your time just in a minute or two. How, how would you say this war against tyranny is going, this war against collectivism? They seem to be on the offense. A lot of folks are waking up, though. But should we be optimistic or pessimistic? Uh, I would say that uh, in 2008, when Obama was elected, uh, we had essentially lost. His election was not a sudden political phenomenon. It was the result of an American socialist movement that had penetrated the media, entertainment, and universities for decades. Uh, his years in office, he's simply been reinforcing all of this. And the question is not whether they're winning. The question is whether we can somehow mount a comeback uh, for the forces of, of, of good and constitutionalism and free markets and, and, and uh, individual rights against this onslaught that's been going on uh, for many, many years. Uh, the, in England, they, they made a, a stand and they won only by a couple percentage points to get rid of the EU. Uh, it remains to be seen if Americans, who are essentially the character of America, is uh, the character of rebels, people that went against the, uh, the British crown, who wanted to be free people with individual rights. Uh, the uh, Declaration of Independence, uh, all of our documents talk about a free people. So it remains to be seen. I think this election will either sew us up as uh, living under this uh, liberal fascism of the radical left, which Hillary Clinton will put a, put a uh, you know, permanent stamp on, or if we can recover and clean out all these. No, I agree with you. We are. This is the crossroads. And I actually grieve inside now because, I, I mean, uh, the stakes are so high, Joel. These people are so horrible. It's a very, very, very serious times. Uh, uh, Obama is, in case it's going to be close, don't forget these guys. Uh, don't Americans know what they call right wing libertarianism stuff is freedom where you're left alone and you have due process and you can, you, it's just, there's no comparison historically, Joel. Don't they have any idea how stupid this is? They spent 50 years eroding the education system. I mean, I was in New York City in a coffee house a couple weeks back sitting next to these two college kids and they were talking about how they can't possibly understand black people because they're white. They had kind of bought into all this, this narrative, that uh, the racist narrative that uh, black people don't value freedom and, and oh, want Oh, it's so racist. I know. It's so condescending. I... Uh, so, you know, we are, we are in very, very serious times, and uh, we certainly hope that uh, uh, the, the forces and voices of freedom can express themselves and overcome this leftist onslaught, because these are experts in voter fraud. Obama's election to, to the state Senate in Illinois was all done with voter fraud. Sure, they're experts in BS, too, man. I tell they're you. experts, and they're flooding us with, with uh, illegals, and they'll do anything and everything. They view the ends as justifying the means. So they will do anything and everything to keep a permanent hold on power. Yeah, they're really just That's, evil people. You're right. They have they have destructive energy, criminal energy. The destructive passion, and we've seen them use the tools of state. They suppress the conservative movement with the Look IRS. at how they take out allies that have stabilized Middle Eastern countries and given people relative freedom and then put literal scum in throwing homosexuals off buildings. Well, uh chaos and insecurity they feed on they feed off of they know if we have prosperity and security that nobody will listen to them yeah they're just evil they're just devil worshipers all right joel gilbert joelgilbert.com great job with all your films look forward to talking to you later this week then or next week as you break this big news we're going to come back with rob doing your call stay with us instead our top scientists come up with better ways to linguistically dumb everyone down so that weirdos like merkel and hillary and holland can prance around and feel powerful. But I'm telling you, I believe we're going to innovate our way out of these tyrants. They've tried to gear all the major innovations towards enslaving us, but there's always things that uh, don't go the way the establishment thinks, and that's certainly happening today. Now, Rob Dew's going to be taking over. I got to say, he Rob Dew...
Uh, it looks really great today. Uh, that you found your style. A Hawaiian shirt with a, a navy blue blazer. Yeah. Uh, with a dude stir duderino or just dude for brevity. You know, Mr. White Russian got a beverage. Uh, the Big Lebowski. Hey, man, I'm not Mr. Lebowski. I'm the dude, the duderino. Uh, Walter, what's everything to do with Vietnam? You know, I didn't lose friends face down in the mud. So this strumpet, this whore. No, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> what are you covering today coming up? Well, um, I'm, I want to play a few videos that we've produced over the last couple days. One, talking to the people out in the street with about Hillary Clinton and how she got off pretty much scot-free. I was watching a little bit of the FBI director getting grilled by, well, kind of getting grilled. Seems like they were playing good cop, bad cop with him because they'd have a de couple Democrats ask him questions. and They'd be like, you've done such a good job and all your service and being bipartisan. And it turns out they didn't even put Hillary Clinton under oath. In this whole fiasco. Well, that's because they'd have to indict her if she got caught lying. She started to be exactly. caught lying. Like, let me not exaggerate, like 50 times, but she was just lying constantly. Exactly. And this is the same Remember, thing they did with George Bush. She never had a separate email or email addresses. Right. She didn't have servers, dude. Oh, no, she it never, never got existed. classified material. Never existed. And, you know, as you were talking about, the scientists are trying to figure out ways to, uh, uh, you know, dumb us down with language. Well, and they're also looking for ways to control us. Now they want to have this pain ray that works by blasting people with microwaves. That's the newest thing. We saw the microwave guns. We saw the sound cannons back in the G20 in Pittsburgh. So this is nothing new. They're worried that people are finally getting the message of what's really going on. And they're definitely pissed as hell of what the, the information we're putting out at the border right now. Uh, Jones, I can tell you that for sure. Yeah, I didn't mean to go off on a jag for like two hours of the show. Just so angry. But... You know, you got the Border Patrol, you got the Fish and Wildlife, they're really the bad guys, the state police, doing bad stuff the first day. So then I got the report, and we we augmented it, and not so much corrected it, but, but at first I was like, why is the Border Patrol a bunch of good people? They're warning us, they get us down there, and then they arrest us. But that was lost in translation. It really wasn't my mistake, but, but we updated it where it was Fish and Wildlife, just, right. just, just claiming they're in charge, you can't be anywhere near the border. In fact, they told them, just don't go anywhere on the river, period. Just yeah. don't. Don't show the illegals pouring that's only, across. That's only Don't for the show us loading them around. on buses. That's right. what they have. Yeah. They put them on buses to take them to the buses to release them, Rob. No, it's totally ridiculous, and that and we're considered the criminals. That's how the press, by going down well, I love there, these fish and the wildlife criminal. idiots. It's all about this woman's power trip yeah. for two hours to have them put their hands on their heads. And she doesn't even know how to handle a firearm. That's the, that's the scary thing. This is a federal officer who's supposed to know how to handle a firearm, doesn't know how to even handle it. It's it's totally amazing. But she knows how to put a TV dinner in the microwave. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know that. You know that. How to, she's probably carry, she probably has one of those giant big gulps that are like this big. She's probably she probably got like a pinup poster of Janet Reno in a bikini on her wall. I mean, it, it's tr truly disgusting what we have to deal with as press. And, th and this is the same thing I've Can't seen Can't you all just over the treat world. fellow Americans who you know who we are? They've admitted in the database, oh, we know who you are, we know yeah. your press. Yeah. Oh, we're going to arrest you. It's like, no, because they've got orders to treat us bad because we're good people. Well, because we're uncovering the program. We're uncovering the fact that they're completing the smuggling process and they're letting the drugs in. I mean, that's it. There's, that's the only reason you would have an open border is if you have deals to keep these drugs flooding. Exactly. Into the and they're mad that we keep showing the drugs coming across. Right. And, then, and then Trump talks about it. They're pissed. And even the Border Patrol, I put in that video, the Border Patrol talking about the tons of marijuana and cocaine and methamphetamine that they're finding every every month. You know, By the way, that's tons. only 20% they stop. Exactly. According to the now. Now, there's a video you put together showing, uh, yeah. I forget the headline, but why Obama wants reporters arrested for reporting on border. Uh, is that video in the article, the drudges? It is. Now? It's at the bottom and it's called, uh, let's see, this video can convince convict Obama of treason and it starts off with Trump uh, basically it's kind of I'm, I'm going to play it later in the show um, it's starting off with Trump and then I cut the border patrol guy saying yeah we get a lot of drugs and then I show him um, uh, completing the well, smuggling process that's a process. great video but, but, but if you say something like this, Trump convicts Obama of treason new video it'll get like 5 million if we don't we'll get like a 500,000 got it or we could doppelgang it and say read at the bottom to see why Obama doesn't want press on the border he wants to continue the illegal operation. I mean, we've confirmed that. Right. We had I mean, that I'm at not the bragging. It shows how pathetic yeah. it is to beat the globalist. We've been down there. It's mainly info wars. And Breitbart's we just go down, down there whenever, too. and stuff's happening. It's us doing Every it time. with Drudge posting it. Drudge is the other part of the equation. Yeah. DrudgeReport.com. Just a few patriotic sites, and, and we're hurting their whole agenda. Right. So, of course, they want to arrest us. No, Drudge gets it. Drudge gets it. Well, what the problem is, Breitbart gets it. They've got reporters down there, too. People get 
the people that are really concerned about this country don't want to destroy it. Get it. Why we have to have a closed border. Why you have to have a secure border. There's, and uh, Jones, we've been down there and uh, over near uh, Big Ben. They, they, the Mexicans come back and forth, and, and illegals and, are going back yeah. and forth, and they're giving tickets to people drinking beer. Exactly. That's what they're more concerned about. They're always more concerned about the Americans and what they're doing. The milk cows. Because they know. That's why they, they had the border patrol slaves. checkpoints ninety pathetic. miles in. Let's admit it. They know we're chumps. Yeah. We're dinner. Yeah. And then that's exactly how they treat us. Well, let's and, and to be fair, the border patrol did do some harassment yesterday, or no, the day before yesterday. On Wednesday, I oh, know that was Tuesday, and then the state police almost ran uh, us over, and right. they just did a lot of bad stuff. And so we came out and said that, and then they got lost in translation that it was the Fish and Wildlife that acted like total moron goons. Yeah. So they're the ones that are going to have the issues now. We're going to state and federal Fish and Wildlife, and we need to shine a light on these people. They can act like absolute tyrants all over and the country. Judge, they're they're always trying to arrest Ted Nugent. Yeah. Ted Nugent, anywhere he goes, federal Fish and Wildlife under orders try to arrest him. And they have they, all I mean, unlimited power. They can go anywhere they, they want. Arresting. There's no Fourth Amendment with the Fish and Wildlife. They can go anywhere they want. They could put you down on the ground, stick your face in the mud. It's disgusting that these federal agencies have more power than the Constitution. But the meanwhile, a constitutional agency like the Border Patrol has been tasked to bring the illegals in and complete the smuggling process. Yeah. By and the way, they, they, you that they clip? obviously you don't that like clip? doing it. Did they don't like doing club? it because they're speaking out, Jones. They're speaking out about it. They're like, please, we need to, we sure, need to shine sure. light on this. Did, did, did you yeah. add the clip where the Border Patrol agent says they complete the smuggling process? Of the course, video? of course. The Hannity clip, yes. Well, good. It's Just because in. people forget all this. And I oh, don't I know. know. No, this is a good compilation. This is one of our best and of just showing the blatant disregard for our basic laws. Hey, guess what? I have to pay my taxes or they take me away from my family. That's the argument they use. How are we going to split up families? You break the law. I'm sorry. But then the, the illegals is. just walk across. Exactly. They say, oh, this is some magic wildlife preserve. We're going to arrest you with illegals walking behind our people and, and while they're reunited with their, with their families. We're going to reunite them. They have family over here in, in New York. I got a guy just send me a, a photo of uh, a, a store in Harlem. It says refugees welcome, a sticker. So that's the new thing. It's trendy to just befriend illegals. What about when the IRS started taking my grandparents' little three-bedroom humble home, which they didn't even owe the money, it turned out, and then made my grandfather have a heart attack and stuff? Right. You know, where was the love for us? You know, we're not refugees, but we didn't have any money. Yeah. No, you're, you're an American citizen. You're a milk cow. That's how they see it. I'm a mark as a dumbass. Right. I'm marked as, a, as, as food. That's what they want. It's, it's totally disgusting. And then you got Hillary Clinton who breaks the law, and they admit it. In the damn press conference, and they go, "Well, we don't, we don't think we should file charges. No prosecutor would do this." There's thing. I've because been arrested a would fall in his all neck. over the country, peacefully demonstrating because of my white privilege. And then all these so-called leftist groups run around attacking people. They don't get in trouble. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm really looking for this white privilege, dude. I'm, I want to discover it as soon as I can. <laughs> it, it has to be mined in, in the minds of Moria, I think. That's, well, that's I mean, I'm sure saying. it goes on at some levels, you know, out in the countryside or something. But uh, you know, I, uh, all I know is. Massive change is coming. Oh yeah, and 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 people say, well, you ought to be glad Hillary's probably going to get in. You know, you'll get more listeners. I I could care less. I would love to, to to for things to get so good in this world that we were obsolete. I would shut this down and I would go run a nursery or something. I love plants. You know, I'd be snowboarding. Well, I mean, how you make money though? I mean, I, I would I would run a nursery or something. I'm serious. I. Uh, I mean, people ask what I like to do. I mean, if I had my brothers, I'd be gardening. And I know. I see you spraying that plant. You dawdle on that plant at your house all the time. I have a bunch of plants. That's the one in the living room. Yeah. Well, Would Pat Riley that? gave it to me. It was like this gigantic jade plant that's like eight feet tall. So I'm trying to keep it alive because I can't put it outside. So there's only light coming in from the living room. And I got to like put another light on the other side. You know, and I'm sitting there spraying it. So uh, the plant's doing well, actually. This is a very important broadcast right now. <laughs> I, I think I think this go. is releasing of tension, Jones. This is the really all everything built up and, and fire lilies too. Like, and, and I want a big koi pond. And see, we could have it all if if we keep Hillary out of office. I, it, it'll boggle my mind if after this that she is still let in. Ninety three percent of the people in an ABC poll think she's guilty. Ninety three percent. Ninety three percent. That's an overwhelming majority. Well, that's the good news is yeah. that even leftists are kind of going, is it a good order. idea to have somebody by the law? Dude, I'm going to hand this baton over to you and the callers and then everything else in the clip. You're going to play. The article's up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. We're running the special that ends in a few days. 
for up to 40% off, 20 to 40% off on the high quality swearable foods. You need them, folks. Plus, it supports the broadcast. It's a no-brainer. Everybody should be self-sufficient. They want to make us dependent. We need to be independent. So all the major uh, survival goods from shortwave radios and non-GMO seeds to Survival Shield X2, they're 20 to 40% off. That will extend till next Monday. But a few things like X2 are selling out, so we've got to stop that soon. Your purchase funds the operation. Hillary for prison search, you name it. InfoWars Store. That's one word. InfoWarsStore.com. InfoWarsLife.com. Just bookmarks right to the nutraceuticals, right to the supplements. Uh, and more or call toll-free, 888-253-3139. All right, enough about watering plants. We're going to come right back with the news. Welcome back to the fourth hour. This is Rob Dew reporting for Simpowars.com. I'm your host for the remainder of the hour. If you're not getting the fourth hour at your local radio station, give them a call. Also, you can spread the link, Infowars.com forward slash show, and you can watch video, and you can see this article that I'm about to pull up using my magic powers. Putin loses it, warns journalists of war. I don't know how to get through to you people. He does not understand that the world is being pulled in an irreversible direction. Maybe my powers aren't working. I bet the screen thing doesn't work, does it? No? no. Yeah, there it is. Look at that. I guess you don't have it because I'm scrolling up and down. Anyway, Putin's taking the kid gloves off. He's trying to warn these journalists that they're being lied to and that there's going to be a world war. He was in a meeting with foreign journalists at the uh, St. Petersburg International Economic Forum, and he said, uh, we're done. Heading down a course which could lead to nuclear war. Which takes us to this story over here. Let's see. Silicon Valley elites buying huge amounts of land for secret compounds. I guarantee these compounds are going to go down deep below. They're buying missile silos. They're setting them up for people to hide in because they know something's coming. They've been reading the metrics. They're, they have the uh, predictive programming systems in place. According to Silicon Valley Insider, the Nouveau Riche are buying up huge amounts of land so they can build private compounds to seclude themselves from the general public. You know, like Mark Zuckerberg says, we don't need a fence around the country, yet he builds a fence around his home in San Francisco. Then he goes to Hawaii and builds a fence around this large swath of land there. But sh we don't need a wall around the country because we need to destroy this country. They're all part of a plan. I'm going to go to uh, James in South Carolina. He wants to talk about the Hillary FBI scandal. James, what's on your mind? Hey, Rob. Uh, just uh, my thought is that the whole judicial judicial system needs to be changed and overwritten. Uh, if Hillary's going to get off of what she's done, then all the criminals in the prison or jail system that is nonviolent needs to be let go. Yeah. And we just need to rewrite the whole judicial system law. And I mean, it's like some laws are, are uh, you know, vo voluntary, I guess, you know? Like illegals can just come over and we give them bus tickets into the center of the, the country. That's okay, you know, because we don't want to split up families. But, you know, you don't pay your taxes, they're going to put you in jail. You sell drugs that they bring in illegally that, you know, like marijuana, you get put in jail, you get separated from your family. Those laws we have to follow because there's uh, milk cow money in, in those. You know, we got to be treated like we're little milk cows. But illegals come in, man, eh, you know, let's give them a free bus ticket wherever they want to go. Let's give them a driver's license. Let's let them vote. You're absolutely yeah, right, James. It just need to rewrite the whole judicial system law and uh, let those people that sell drugs, uh, that get put in jail, uh, that done far less. I mean, Martha Stewart done far less and got 10 years, correct? Right. Yeah, she lied. Exactly. They said she lied. It wasn't even that she broke the law. It was it was when they were talking to her, she, she lied, is what they're saying. Then didn't Hillary just lie? Yeah. To the FBI? In fact, we got the story from Kit Daniels. Hillary faces perjury criminal probe for lying about emails to Congress. That just went up from Kit Daniels. So apparently she's not out of the woods yet. I like this, the fact that this keeps getting brought out. But, you know, people are still going to vote for Hillary because she's a woman. It doesn't matter if she's a criminal. Yeah, there was a guy that was about to testify in, in, in some weird scheme they had where they were bringing money from China. And he was a U.N. official. A barbell fell on his neck. And the person who gave the cause of death didn't even look at the body? I mean, what? There's stuff called proper procedure. It's like, 
when when uh, the Supreme Court justice died, Scalia down in Texas, they're just like, oh, bring the body to El Paso. Let's not examine it. Let's just get him out of here. You know, there's no investigation when it comes to these high profile people. It's just shut up and listen to what we say, not watch what we do. James, thanks for calling. Got time for one more call. Let's go to Ken Kenny in New York. Biggs at the border. Go ahead, Kenny. Hi, Rob. How you doing? I'm doing great. How about you? Got about a minute. Um, yes. Um, I'm just, uh, you know, I didn't even eat lunch today, man. You know, just, you know, like, when is this going to stop? You know, and all this, when is, is all this stuff going to stop? I mean, you know, you have legitimate reporters, you know, going down to the border, you know, showing us what's going on. And, you know, they get arrested. You know, they have ID. They have their legitimate press ID. Yeah. And, you know, what's to stop them from, you know, stopping me, taking my, you know, weapons away? Sure. I go to I go to the range all the time. You well, know, I, there's an incident going on now where a guy, uh, apparently he was had ID to carry a firearm. He was legal and lawful, and he went to pull out his ID, and, and they shot him. I mean, we don't know all the particulars because we'll probably never see the body camera. But, you know, we're fo the people that follow the laws are the ones that get picked on and, and sicked on by the government. We'll be back with more. This is Rob Dew with The Alex Here Jones Show. March. Rob Dew here with The Alex Jones Show, fourth hour of Overdrive. Pleasure to be with you. We're going to go to a video about um, basically showing why Obama should be convicted for keeping the border open and what is going on and what he's letting in on purpose to destroy this country. We've got some callers here. We've got Ben, Tim, Danette, and Josh. I'm going to try to get to you guys as we uh, play these videos. I may pop out of these videos uh, early, just letting you guys know. And um, But before we get to that, the elites are preparing for something. They know what's going on, and they're not letting us know about it. Maybe you might get clues here and there. In fact, economist Robert Johnson said the rich were making such purchases like airstrips and redoubts everywhere because they think they need a getaway from the Ferguson-style riots that were erupt as a result of the widening, widening wealth inequality, which is at its worst in virtually all developed countries since the 1980s. This is uh, something they've caused. And there you can read more about it in this article. Silicon Valley elites are buying huge amounts of land for secret compounds. Are you prepared out there? We still have our Independence Day mega sale going on. We extended it till it's going to be going on till Monday. 20 to 40% off on select products, but it's a wide selection. I was looking at it last night. I was actually working on an ad for this. I couldn't believe all the stuff that, that, that is being sold. You got some great deals on storable food. If you don't have any storable food, you need to get something. Start off with three month. Get a year if you have a big family. Um, get some storable food because you're going to need it. It may be for a short amount of time. You, you never know. But look at Venezuela. Look how they went from being a, a normal socialist country, which is pretty crappy, to now these people are in the streets. They're killing cats and dogs. They're killing each other. They're raiding stores. There's giant food riots going on everywhere. It can happen here. We've had instances when the EBT systems have stopped working. Okay, what if those don't work for a week? What's going to happen? People are going to be rioting. Okay, you need to be prepared. We also have 20% uh, off some of the shortwave radios, the survival uh, heirloom seeds, uh, the water filters, the ProPure air filters, X2, which I might not last that long. They're, uh, they're getting low on X2 because that's something you need just to keep your health in line every day. And also we have the new Hillary for Prison t-shirts, which uh, the sales from those will be used to fund banners. Alex said today he's gonna, he'll fly banners over D.C. if people buy enough of these shirts. It's becoming a huge meme, international meme. People want to see this, this creature, Hillary Clinton, in prison, and now she's facing a perjury criminal probe for lying about emails to Congress. I'm going to go to your calls right after this short video we're going to play, starting off with Trump talking about, hey, InfoWars is showing drugs coming across the border. What do you guys do? Why is our border so open? Well, because it's meant to be that way. It's meant to destroy our country. So here is the video. What happened? So while we're there, you probably read it. It was in Drudge, who's great, by the way. Drudge is amazing. But the story in Drudge and big story, it's all over the place now. Guys swimming across and big bags of stuff, it's drugs. Swimming across the river, right? Swimming right across. And they put the drugs, and actually the camera crew, or the reporters, were petrified because they thought they were going to be killed. 
because they're showing this on camera. The guy's carrying bags of stuff. It was drugs. And on that topic of the drugs, it's not just people coming over, but bringing drugs on a general, let's say a month. Uh, what type of drugs do you encounter and what quantities? Uh, the, the most common is marijuana. We see thousands upon thousands of pounds weekly. Um, we do see a lot of cocaine. We start, we're starting to see heroin and meth a lot more. Usually those were reserved for the ports of entry, but now they started running those across the river as well. What happened to today in particular is that the Border Patrol dropped off some, they call them detainees, but right. obviously they're not detained after they drop them off. Mm -hmm. And uh, normally they have tickets or arranged transportation to go somewhere in the interior. Well, today, apparently for some logistical reasons, some of them didn't, hadn't had transportation arranged or their transportation is tomorrow. Right. And so we're having to find places to shelter them for tonight. So we've accessed some resources that we have. We're going to shelter them here tonight. So uh, why is the Border Patrol bringing them here? They're not bringing them here. They're bringing them to our bus terminal because that's where the Border Patrol understands that they have transportation to go to the interior. Right. So they're dropping them off. It's our understanding that they were dropped off with tickets or with vouchers for tickets. Um, it turns out some of them didn't tonight, didn't right. have their ticket or didn't have their voucher or, like I said, their bus is until tomorrow. So they got nowhere to stay. Our bus terminal bars, I mean the city of McAllen, mm -hmm. the bus terminal is not a 24-7 operation. Right. So we've got to put them up somewhere else. So for tonight, we're doing the best we can with this resource, which thankfully one of our neighboring cities right. made available to us, and we're going to put them up here tonight. Tomorrow we'll have a little chat with the Border Patrol and see what's going on. Right. They're supposed to be protecting this border. You mean aiding and abetting. What do you mean specifically? Actually, what's happening is that the uh, federal government is actually completing the smuggling cycle. Uh, by having a parent sending their, their child to the uh, U.S. border and have them, having them smuggled, uh, that is only part of the, of the smuggling cycle. Okay. How long was your journey to get here? It took us two months. We were working and working on the way up until we got here, where we're at. We just want to complete the journey, but we're already tired and thirsty and hungry. Eventually we'll get where we want to go, but it's getting impossible. As far as the people coming over, are your agents encountering any type of uh, infectious diseases, people with illnesses as they cross the border? Oh, most definitely. We see tuberculosis pretty regularly, um, scabies. Um, more often than not, we have large amounts of uh, infectious diseases as far as scabies go. And the interesting part with that is it's, it's not actually um, seen on the body during the infectious period. And so these people clear through our system and then they go into the, the rest of the country with that disease. Uh, we see a lot of uh, measles, a lot of chicken pox, um, a lot of unidentified illnesses that, that you know, a lot of uh, lung infections that we have no idea what they are. Uh, what was your name? Alma down there? Alma. Yeah. Alma Garza, I think. Where are you headed? South. Okay, so we can't go anywhere in here at all? You guys passed the USA. Okay, alright, well, we'll stay out of there. Okay. Thanks. How's it? You guys? News or journalists? I already told them, yes, and they're from Honduras. From Honduras? Mm -hmm. How long have you been traveling? How long have you been traveling? A month. A month. Mm -hmm. They've been traveling for a month now. When yeah. did they get into the U.S.? When 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 did they get into the U.S.? It has, uh, has some type of criminal history here in the United States. Uh, on top of that, we only catch 40% of what's coming across as actual in this area. So that's 20% of what we catch are known bad guys. You, know, you can only imagine what the other 60% of people that are coming across, who they are or what their plans are. We have no idea. Um, the interesting part is they're not staying here in the Rio Grande Valley. A lot of these folks are using it as a waypoint to move forward, whether it's the people themselves or drugs. It's all going through the area and it's going into larger communities like uh, 
the San Antonio's, the Austin's, the Dallas, all the way up to Virginia, Maryland, uh, D.C., Chicago. They're all headed that way. Last night, and before we know it, two uh, state wildlife... And look who's treated like criminals. Reporters are treated like criminals. And then we had to sit up and wait on another federal agent to come in who is a federal... Even though we got the Border Patrol saying the 20% that they catch have criminal records in this country. That doesn't mean they could, there could be even another percentage that's criminals in their country. That's why they're fleeing to the United States. And Donald Trump is a racist for saying criminals come across the border. And you got a border patrol saying it, agent, he's saying it right there. That's 20% of what they catch. And they say they only catch 40% of what's coming across. So let those numbers spin in your head as we talk to Ben in Illinois. Go ahead, Ben. Oh, hello. Hi, thanks for holding. Can you hear me okay? Sure can, go ahead. Okay, I just, uh, earlier I was going to comment on the fact that uh, they're apparently going to be forcing people to put transgender bathrooms or unisex bathrooms in, in churches, and I'm just, I, don't, I obviously don't see how that's going to work in a Muslim religion, you know. Yeah, or or you'll lose your vaunted 501c3 status, which basically just makes you a, a ward of the state anyway. And um, yeah, they're they're going to try to push this on everybody. And if you don't have it, if you have men and women's bathrooms, you're going to have to put in another bathroom. How much is that going to cost? On an existing place, you're adding new plumbing? It's ridiculous. Yeah, totally agree. You got anything else to add? Yeah, uh, we're, uh, they're talking about her being a... Hillary being Jezebel and stuff like that. And if I was to ever give her an allegorical uh, name, it would definitely be uh, the, the whore of Babylon. I mean, she's uh, especially in the fact that she's writing this piece that she's created through ISIS and everything. It's like, it's like perfectly aligned up with the Bible. And she's drunk with the blood of the saints for sure. But even though that more likely means uh, the Roman church and yada, 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 and Obama certainly filling the role of Antichrist. I'm not saying he is, but boy, <laughs> when he's walking around in his pocket, all the... He's doing his best. Of yeah. Religion, you know? yeah. yeah, he's doing <laughs> like, his best to destroy this country. He hates this country. He hates everything it stands for. And uh, he would like to see it go away and become, you know, a, a Muslim multicultural nation that lets anything and everything come by, except if you have, if you have Christian values, well, those are wrong. But throwing gays off buildings, that's okay. Thanks for calling, Ben. Let's go to Danette in New York. Danette, what's on your mind? Hi, yes, I have two concerns. Uh, the first one is, while we're focusing on Hillary, uh, Congress is focusing on gun laws. I was yeah. watching C-SPAN yesterday, and they're in the process, and I'm very concerned. So I don't know if your show can keep a watch on and keep us up to date, because I'm concerned that they're going to be taking our guns or find a way where the U.N. can come the back way and take our guns away. And with all these people coming in our country, we don't know who's here. We really need to keep, you know, protect our Second Amendment. Do you know that they're now, while we're, you know, watching Hillary, they're doing all that gun laws right, right. now? Oh, I know. It's what they all... It's that's their favorite scheme is to throw something out there to keep people talking about it. And then they come in with, oh, we're going to pass massive immigration laws or gun laws. Yeah, we actually sent, uh, Jakari Jackson went to interview Michael Cargill, who's a local gun, uh, uh, gun shop owner here and firearms instructor, to talk about what's going on in California and all those new gun laws that they are pushing through. So, yeah, that'll be on the nightly news tonight. If you're not a member of Prison Planet TV, you can become a member very easily. Go to prisonplanet.tv and you can uh, get a membership and watch the nightly news live at 7 p.m. when it goes out. And uh, we also put portions of that up on YouTube. But we thank our Prison Planet members. And yes, we are always keeping an eye on our Second Amendment because that is the amendment that protects all the rest. And if you don't believe it, just go to other countries and see how they're treated. Um, hey, guys, let's go to that Hillary Clinton video that Darren McBreen put together. Um, this is the one, uh, I think it's in her own words is what it's called. Get that ready. Let's go to this uh, call from Tony in Idaho. Tony, how's it going? I know you guys in Idaho have a lot of immigrants that they bring up there. There's actually a big uh, well-to-do going on in Twin Falls with this rape of a young girl and how that's being covered up. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. There's one talk show host here running a big uh, campaign against it, but uh, I don't know what good he's doing. Uh, I, I wanted to talk to you about uh, this deal where they're arrested Joe Biggs and, and 
basically sold his money. We get right down to it. Oh yeah. Uh, I think we should start taking pictures, names, and and badge numbers of these people. You know, uh, these people have said they're going to destroy the, uh, the population of the earth, basically. Well, God is not going to allow them to do that. There, there's going to be an end to what they're doing here. When there's an end, there should be uh, Nuremberg-style trials, and there's not going to be any uh, Operation Paperclip for these people. They need no. to know that they are going to be put on trial, that we know who they are, and they need to know that if they lose this, that's what they're going to be looking forward to. Right. They're, well, they're meant, they're meant as the fodder because they're the ones doing the orders. They're doing the bidding of the people up above who are uh, telling them, that, oh, we're going to let the illegals in, we're going to let the drugs in. Reporters come around, treat them like they're criminals. Treat them like they're bad because that's how, that's how we destroy a country. By having a, a servant class doing the bidding of the evil ones up above. And that is basically what you have. Yeah, those people need to go on trial. They, they took an oath to defend the Constitution. At least they used to whenever you become a federal officer. And I don't know if they do that anymore. Hey, guys, let's roll that clip. Let's hear Hillary, in her own words, convict herself in the court of public opinion. Gentlemen, the fix is in. Hillary Clinton, the establishment puppet candidate for president, has been cleared of all charges by the FBI. This just days after Bill Clinton met secretly with Attorney General Loretta Lynch on a private plane. Look, this woman is a criminal. She destroyed subpoenaed evidence. I mean, this has already been established, and doing so is a felony crime. The FBI knows it, the media knows it, and the public knows it. So it's not a matter of if Hillary Clinton is guilty, it's a matter of why she isn't being tried and convicted. This investigation began as a referral from the intelligence community inspector general in connection with Secretary Clinton's use of a personal email server during her time as Secretary of State. The referral focused on whether classified information was transmitted on that personal system. Our investigation looked at whether there is evidence that classified information was improperly stored or transmitted on that personal system in violation of a federal statute that makes it a felony to mishandle classified information either intentionally or in a grossly negligent way. I did not email any um, classified material to anyone on my email. There is no classified material. From the group of 30,000 emails returned to the State Department in 2014, 110 emails in 52 email chains have been determined by the owning agency to contain classified information at the time they were sent or received. The facts are pretty clear. I did not send nor receive anything that was classified at the time. Eight of See, those chains. <laughs> Hillary's using common core math. Secret she says nothing. They were sent. The FBI says 110. It doesn't matter. Hey, you can watch the rest of that video. In her own words, Hillary is guilty as hell on the Alex Jones channel, or you can find it on Infowars.com. So you can watch the rest of that video. We got some other great videos too. Liberals think crooked Hillary is a criminal. And that's it. going around talking to the liberals here in Austin. Even they are sick of her. That's when you know you're turning the tide. And that's thanks to everybody out there getting the word out. This is Rob Dew with the Alex Jones Show fourth hour of Overdrive. You can find the websites at infowars.com and prisonplanet.tv. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back with the final segment. So Donald Trump puts out a tweet about crooked Hillary and puts a star on there. And everybody freaks out. Oh, he's a anti-Semitic racist. Well, and his, and his staff wouldn't change it and put a circle, which they shouldn't have done, because then we've shown that Disney does the same thing. Well, they put a star on the uh, the Ice Princess's box or whatever it is for that, that movie, Frozen. But let, here's Donald Trump doubling down on that right now. Which is fine. I, I said, you shouldn't have taken it down. You know, they took the star down. I said, too bad. You should have left it up. I would have rather defended it. Just leave it up. Yeah. I'd say, no, that's not a star, David. That's just a star. It's also about corrupt Hillary, corrupt Hillary. But she sent it out. She said, oh, this is, sorry. she's the one that started the dialogue. You know why? Because she wanted to get off the FBI. And you know who got hurt worse by the FBI than anybody? Bernie Sanders, because he was waiting for the FBI 
to make him the nominee. FBI primary. All right, there's Trump. And notice he's behind a bunch of stars that aren't anti-Semitic. But let's talk about the hypocrisy a little more, and then I'm going to try to finish up with your calls. Obama's civilian drone death count up 500% higher than U.S. mass shootings. So when he goes on TV and does his fake crocodile tears and cries about the shootings that are happening in this country, there it is. He kills more than 500% more with his little drones that he signs off on. And, they kill not, and that's just the civilians he's killing. Okay. Like the young boy who who his uh, dad was Anwar al He got killed in a drone. 16-year-old boy. Eh, who cares? You know, kill a wedding party. Eh, who cares? I'm the president. I'm allowed. It's hypocritical. Okay, we need to hold these people's feet to the fire. Let's go to Tim in Wyoming, liberals at the borders. What's going on, Tim? Yes, hi, Rob. Thanks for taking my call. I appreciate it. Uh, now, I wanted to mention really quick, now, there's a, a libertarian show that I like to talk on, uh, I like to call into, and the, the host of the show actually have the view, and I'm not sure if this is a libertarian view specifically, but they seem to think that the United States of America, the government of the U.S. of A, is a, an experiment that's failed. And the borders should be open and we should be allowed allowing everybody from everywhere in. I try to make the point to them that if we don't have borders, we don't have a country. That's the whole, that's the whole point I try to get across to them. But they're very, they're very reluctant to understand that for some reason. I'm not sure if that's a... If that's a literal libertarian perspective that we have. Well, you know, Jesse Ventura, I think, has the same perspective that we shouldn't have borders. But, um, you know, we have all these rules in place. And I wouldn't mind if people came into this country, but I don't think they should get anything free. If you go to a country, you're supposed to help build it up, not help drag it down. And I think bringing a bunch of people in to act as anchors are, to our economy is not the way to go. Thanks for calling. Let's go to Josh in Wisconsin. Go ahead, Josh. Are you there? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, of course, uh, um, well, first of all, of course, like uh, um, uh, Ventura and them agree with that. Um, they're big, strong men. But if you take like a 90-pound a woman that can't defend themselves like them, they might not feel the same way. I agree. Um, That's why everybody but, uh, needs to be armed. Yeah, and what I want to talk about was um, I want to try to, uh, like, maybe start the people thinking about, like, a posse comitatus movement through the sheriff's department. And I'd like the sheriff's department to maybe consider making the citizens aware of their own power through the Posse Comitatus Act, okay? That's what I was trying to get across. Um, and I think that uh, um, maybe it's also possible that the um, our sheriff department were to deputize specific, um, like, uh, uh, shooting clubs, martial mm -hmm. arts associations, stuff like that. Yeah, there was a sheriff, I think he was in Idaho, who said, hey, I'll deputize all the citizens here if you feds don't stop messing with us. And that's what we need sheriffs to do. We need real sheriffs in this country. Greg, sorry, I'm not going to get to you. Thanks for calling, though, um, in PA. And incidentally, there is a Hillary uh, protest going on in Scranton tomorrow morning. If you're going to be out and about and you're in the Scranton, PA area, 10 a.m., they're going to be uh, protesting crooked Hillary. This, I think, is the first protest since she got off scot-free from the FBI for, you know, handling classified information in her home server. It's okay when she does it, but not when you do it. Rob Dew with InfoWars.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central and watch the nightly news tonight, 7 p.m. Central.